And I believe we are actually live. Live streaming our home game since, uh, I don't know what, a couple of years now. Yeah. Or six months. I forget exactly how long it's been. Welcome to Legends of the Drowned Dials, a homebrew D&D 5th Ed game. Uh, the, the home game, normally all broadcast from my living room today uh, because of social distancing. We're being social at a distance. Uh, welcome to this game. My name is Mark. I am Mark the Encaffeinated One. I am the GM and responsible largely for most of this not making any sense whatsoever, but I'm trying. I do have with me, however, my usual slate of players. We'll go from left to right, starting with Pat. Uh, I am Pat. I am playing Emrin Alisar, Cleric of Polexia. Next. Okay, I wasn't sure if everybody had the same order on the bottom of their screen. Hi, we, I'm we Max, do, and do. I play Zakis and Lana Porter, who's a half a half elf wizard. I was hoping to have Costley on today, but didn't happen. I'm Murray. I'm playing Elzara Amakir, who is a uh, druid. I'm going to be playing Clark. My name is Jody, and I'll be playing the uh, roguish fighting half orc, who seems to be not doing so well. Oh no. <laughs> well, well, we'll see how everybody's doing in a moment. Um, okay, how do I do this again? All right, let's uh, do a little recap and then we'll get into it. Um, all right. It's, it's a little more nerve wracking, I'll say. So please bear with me as I try to get this uh, in, in case uh, in going. For last, li last time we left off, which was back in. Um, Early March, I think, was the last time that we actually managed to get together. The group traveled to the orcish winter city of Azza by going over the mountains as mist. The high snow-covered mountains proved to be far colder than expected and caused some of them to become somewhat exhausted. Besides white bears, some of the group also noticed something at a building at the very peak watching them. They decided to press on, however. When they arrived in Azza, they saw formations of orc warriors running through drills. Here they witnessed the fierce, dangerous fighters that they'd heard a little about. Others seemed to be moving goods into the mountainside. When they regained their forms, Sadalitas was confronted by a lone orc hunter named Inagu. After explaining why they'd come, he took them to see their leader inside the mountain. The orc winter city of Azza was revealed to be an old dwarven stronghold. On the buildings outside and within, orc glyphs had been carved over every surface, obscuring any original markings. The glyphs did not look fresh. Within the city, the group was escorted to meet their leader, Expa. When they were alone with her, she revealed herself to be none other than the ancient hag they'd once met before in the coven with Hoarfrost and Bone Twitch, but she did not give her name. Nonetheless, Expa seemed to be pleased, or at the very least amused, to see them again. She did not know the cause of the illness they were following, but had suggested that it might have something to do with a shapeshifter had been detected in the city, but not yet found. Expa directed Inagu to take the group to the wards where the sick had been kept. These wards seemed to be neglected rooms far deeper into the complex. In the first room they visited, they briefly met four attendants, one of whom was drumming. There were six patients, each of them teenage dwarfs. Before they had a chance to examine them, however, the drummer coughed. Each of the sick children and the drummer changed. A flood of blue scales erupted over the skin of the patients, and their bodies distorted. Their mouths grew wide and held jagged teeth. Their arms and legs grew longer and thinner, and long claws grew, grew from their fingers. They hissed and growled, then attacked. In the fight that followed, a few things were discovered. As the creatures were struck, it became apparent that whatever the creatures were, the orcs were still inside them, somehow. Magics that affected diseases seemed to affect them, but while curing it killed the disease and the creature reverted back to an orc, the orc was unfortunately dead. The creature seemed to stop attacking after a certain point. Once that point was reached, they avoided most of the group, seeking a way to run instead. And one of the ones that got away was tracked down, but the other seemed to disappear without a trace. Now, a word of, of warning slash explanation. This plot line was conceived about six months ago, actually probably longer, when uh, the group was uh, in an otherworldly um, hellish prison called The Shadow. 
I had no idea it would become um, somewhat reflective of current events. That was not my intent. So don't take this as an analogy necessarily of, uh, of our current situation. Six but, months later, part two. <laughs> yeah, it's like the never-ending winter. Maybe you're like the Simpsons and you can just predict what's going to happen with your bloodlines. I hope not. Uh, if, if I can, I'm going to start making a lot happier plot lines, I think. And <laughs> In which, uh, you know, the, the, the benevolent, godly GM gets, uh, you know, elevated to proper status in the world. Probably not. I'll just create my own problems. Anyway, the battle had just concluded. And there you sat after finding one of them and the other one having vanished. Inagu himself was there with you and wounded. I realize I don't have an icon for Inagu. I'll have to figure that out later. Uh, but... You had just moments ago fought these things and learned the ugly truth. That once converted, it seemed like at least the easier ways to remove the disease from them no longer did keep the patient alive. What do you do? Only moments have passed. We need to check the other rooms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or the other places. I look at Imagu, is it? Inagu, um, yeah. Take us to the other children. How many were there? Does Expo know about this? We've never seen anything like this before. They were ill, is all we knew. What? What is this? What are they? What has happened to them? I don't know. But if this happened to them, it may have happened to the others as well. Just elsewhere. And they seem to be intent on running away. Maybe they're amassing somewhere he nods and uh follow me the other two rooms they had uh, set aside as wards are not that far away inside you see uh one of them uh looks like all the patients are uh asleep lethargic not entirely unlike what you'd seen the children back on the beach on the western side of this island um, but uh, none of them seem to have been converted or transformed. In this one, there is no drummer, but there are two attendants, two uh, older orc uh, men in this case, uh, one battle scar scarred and, uh, and missing one hand, and the other one um, looking a little older, a little fatter, um, a, little, uh, a little less mobile. They seem surprised when you come in. Everyone's going to rush in. Okay. First thing you'll do is go to the closest kid and cast uh, uh, Lesser Restoration, because that had worked on the ones before. Okay. As before, you feel that sense of a pushback. That, oh, and he's using holy water. Okay. Gotta go full tilt. And, man, it's been a while. I believe it was an Arcana roll? Uh... <laughs> it's been a while. Spell ability check. Spell ability check. You're right. Spell yeah. Basically. Yeah. And holy water gave me advantage. Yep. Yeah, I was going to say that too. Uh, now, how do I roll something with adv oh, advantage dice roller? Do the right. Oh. Do. Uh. Okay. That, uh, oh yeah, it was basically my attack bonus. Yep. Where... Spell attack bonus. There we go. Uh... Actually, you rolled an 18, so I'm, I'm going to give it to you. I got a 34. Um, no. Uh, Attacking no. them both together. <laughs> you got a, uh, a plus 9, so 27. Um, and as you as you uh, lay your hands down on this on this poor child whose skin has gone grayer and there's less distinction between the uh, colors of their of their uh, uh, their lips and eyes all seems to have grayed out. You see the wash and flow of blue and white energy over them like a wave passing through them, and their color is restored. They wearily open their eyes and look up, kind of curiously at you. Uh, the older of the two uh, gentlemen that's there, the older of the two attendants, uh, has kind of looked shocked at what <laughs> you're suddenly rushing in, you unknown person, but now looks quite amazed at uh, at what you've done. Danke. 
Do you speak Orcish? Nope. Uh, Clark looks says something. In, yeah, I just said thank you, essentially. So thanks. And walks over to the child. I say my phrase. Uh, <laughs> Catchphrase. Is it Brazunga il der Betno? Oh, oh yeah. Uh, il Pollux Unga. Those mean things. They do. I have that here somewhere. Uh, I believe it was I am a healer. Yep. Yeah. I'm here to make um, you well. Oh, that no, the first sorry, the first one actually he just says Il Pollux Unga. The first one says I can basically I can restore your uh Yeah, Il Pollux Unga, I am sacred healer. Yep. Yeah. Um yeah, the other one, Barazunga il Dubert no, was a spirit memory weaver return. Yeah. Okay. Um, he goes over to kind of cradle the child, um, has a small clay bottle of water, starts feeding the child. Uh, the other one um, points you to another one of them and with urgency uh, says something, which Clark will translate as, please, this one next. It is it is of my kin. Uh, first thing, Isaiah, uh, Elzera, it it's back. It's like back in the first village. It's not as bad as the last room. Uh, okay. And uh, I look at Imagu, and uh, say, "Is is this the rest of them? Are there more?" There is another room. Okay. Uh, I will uh, then cast. Uh, Lesser restoration on the kid that the guy is begging to be uh, cured. And another vial of holy water. And again, you feel that pushback, this time stronger. When you can see around the edges of the eyes of this child, there's a little bit of a, of a dark ring. And my options are 23 or 17. I'll take the 23. Okay, that's enough again. Uh, and again, it, the, the holy water kind of splashes out and almost even before it touches the body kind of transforms into a spray, which uh, floats over the body and kind of sits on the skin sinking in. And while they don't open their eyes, it does seem like their breath becomes more regular and deeper. Uh, How and many the, kids? Uh, the, there's only four in here. Four more or four including those two? Four, four including those two. Okay, so two more. Uh... We better check the other room. Okay. Uh, I'll ask someone you. if I can have some holy water and I'll heal the other two. Sure. Uh, I can give her a couple of vials. Okay. It seems as though um, with this space uh, or these patients, they haven't been sick as long. So again, it, there is some resistance, uh, but it's not, uh, not what you'd seen in the other room. And they do seem to be alive still by the end of the treatment. Mm. Um, I'll ask Elzera. to ask the attendant because like don't speak Orkish if they know like or if the kids know where they contracted this illness if we can find the source it might make our job easier Translate. okay uh, the, the uh, one that's missing a hand actually speaks back to you in broken common yeah. uh, having sort of understood and maybe he's traveled more it's hard to say but uh, the the missing hand and the scars across his body mark him probably as a as a warrior, maybe as a as a, maybe even as a pirate at one point. It's hard to say, but he speaks back to you in broken common. They were out to forage to find more in the depths. This place is big. We have not looked everywhere. They were below. They were below. They were below ground more. If they could take us there, we may be able to find clues as to what's going on. He shakes his head vigorously. I can take. They are not going there. Sounds good. After we take care of the next ones and cure any other six children. And he kind of nods his head. Um, Alzara, if you want to try to heal one of them. And I get advantage as well for the uh, holy water. The holy water, yep. So 21? 21. That's just enough. You feel uh, a tremendous amount of pushback 
as from you. How does your magic manifest? Is there a color or a pattern? It's like green vines and leaves that like swirl. Okay. Um, it kind of wraps around a little bit. There's a little bit of, of nervousness, but they're trusting you from what you've already demonstrated. And little little uh, flowers appear in the vines um, as the the child that's in front of you, young female orc, uh, sort of turns and twists now from the still position they had been, and a smile with uh, small little tusks appears on the child, not opening their eyes yet as well, but breathing deeply. And actually, you see the the f the flowers kind of gathered sort of towards the face, such that you know that the first thing that they breathed in when they returned back to their their positive state was a breath of beautiful flowers. And then the second one, uh, 29. 29. This time, now knowing the, the sense and feeling of this, the sense of resistance, which is almost like a sort of organic wall, and you are using the power, digging deep within the, the space of roots and vines, which know that no wall stands up to the force of time and nature. You find the cracks in it, and it goes crumbling down. Uh, this time, the child's eye, one eye opens uh, quite quickly, and then kind of drifts back down to a half-contented uh, sleep. In the other room, Amrun, uh, led by Inagu, uh, you find only one attendant, uh, a, an elderly orcish woman um, who seems to be half bent over. Her back is very, very curved, but her hands seem firm and strong as she is attending to three adults, two males, one woman, both probably in their middle ages. Um, they seem to be awake, uh, although uh, coughing a little bit. She's currently bathing the back of one of the males uh, whose shirt is off. You can see that along this skin there are tendrils of black, probably following veins, uh, which is probably the early stages of whatever this is. They seem oh. surprised to see you, but seeing Inagu with you, don't question it. Again, uh, I'll say Il Polaksunga. It's like it's a like key that opens doors. Um, <laughs> and I'll go over to, uh, I guess this is the closest one. Uh, and uh, uh, there's a, a male with a, a half beard who kind of looks up uh, hopefully at you and looks back and forth between you and Inagu and the woman uh, I'll take his hand and uh, basically uh, sprinkle the holy water on his chest and then uh, put a hand down and uh, lesser restoration again to okay. uh, move the disease Again, some resistance, but very, very minimal at this point. Uh, and is that a roll or not a roll? Uh, that is a roll okay. still, but you do have advantage from the holy water. Uh, oh, I got to watch that. No, that rolls two of them. Okay. So 22 and 26, so 26. Yeah, no problem. Um, this time, as the, the force of the blue-white magic pushes inward, the blackened veins seem to expel a gas of black that sort of dissipates in the air quickly afterwards. Uh, and instantly, uh, his back straightens, and he looks at you with uh, serious but appreciative eyes and says something in orcish. It's something similar to what the other older one had said, so you take it as probably something like thank you. I uh, just nod, and uh, next closest one, same thing. Okay, this is the woman. Um, she already sort of straightens up and, and embraces herself, as if this is going to hurt. I got 11 and 24, so I'll take the 24. Yeah, no problems. Again, the mist is expelled, and uh, uh, she... Uh, steps up almost immediately getting up on her feet from her sitting position and clasps both hands on your shoulders uh, looking you straight in the eyes uh, she says something different uh, and then walks out immediately not waiting for anything else uh, and Nagu kind of coughs um, I won't translate that I go to the uh, third one Okay. Uh, this is the Amarin's one who's been not, bathed. Uh, Amarin doesn't really react 
to it. He just goes to the next one as fast as he can. Okay, the older woman steps out of your way. And I I used another holy water vial. I've got one left after this. Uh, I used up a whole lot of them. Uh, 22 or 27. I'll go with the 27. Okay. Uh, no problems whatsoever pushing it out. And this one uh, looks uh, between you and the older woman. Uh, nods his head down uh, and and uh, slaps his chest with his hand uh, in a sort of wordless salute. Uh, Inagu just simply uh, tells them, tells him and the other man who's still there, something, and they both uh, bow to you, bow to the old woman, and then turn to leave. I look at him. I go, Is this all the rest? These are all the wards we had set up, yes. This is the first time I've seen it affecting adults. Uh, this must have been recent. I'm assuming that uh, Elzara shows up uh, momentarily. It yep. Wouldn't have taken her too long to do that. Yeah, you passed in the hallway, Elzara, by, by uh, three orcs. Uh, two of them uh, shirtless, and uh, uh, they... Kind of look at you oddly, but firmly move quickly away. I'm assuming you all regather essentially at this point. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was figuring. And the old woman leaves you alone as well. Uh, kind of grabs your hand, uh, Amrun, and uh, bows, uh, saying many things. Uh, even for an older orc, um, she's almost as tall as you, even with the curved spine. And mm -hmm. her hands are weathered and worn, but very firm as she gra grasps yours. And says something that Inago uh, translates, or Joe, or uh, yeah. Clark can translate, essentially as uh, "May your your children be strong and hold you forever," which is a little bit curious, but. Um. I'll clasp her hands, and I'm going to say a prayer. It'll take about a minute, and I cast regeneration on her. Okay. To see how that improves her uh, right. her spine. All right. So as uh, the rest of you are gathering, you see uh, Amun muttering or saying this this prayer. How? What did he look like when he's saying his prayer? Uh, he's, hmm. I mean, he probably at this point, just because he he, I mean, he didn't really prepare anything for this. He's just holding her hands. Uh, with his head down as he he prays, but the um, basically the watery tendrils probably flow out uh, around her almost like a magical exoskeleton. If it's if it manages to actually like straighten her uh, her spine, then it, it kind of forms around her and supports her to stand up. Um, I don't know what the actual effect will have though on it. And which spell was this again? Sorry. Regeneration. It's the one he was using to restore people's limbs. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, the the uh, blue and white energy flows around her. She looks at it rather curiously and looks at you with a little bit of concern, um, but from a, 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 a nod from Inagu seems to be trusting in it. You see her kind of tense her muscles a little bit and breathe in as if preparing herself for something, but then a strange look crosses over her face as uh, she feels the magic start to take effect and she does indeed straighten up and now towers over you by yeah. nearly a foot uh, <laughs> uh, and and kind of uh, looks uh, down on you uh, still still aging and wizened um, but her hands now uh, as she even notices have lost a few of the calluses uh, then and become uh, firm once again the skin still a bit saggy from age uh, but her back seems to have straightened, uh, and then she uh, hugs you. You take. No. <laughs> uh, it is it is somewhat bracing, and you find your own spine straightened somewhat by the rather invigorous uh, 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 envelopment. Um, but then she says something to you, uh, and then something to Inagu, and as she turns to the door, kind of uh, uh, looks back, smiles, winks. Uh, and then uh, says something again, which Inagu says, I, I'm, I'm not going to translate that. Uh, Clark, you know that what she said was, um, uh, earlier she had said, may, uh, may your children grow strong and forever hold you. 
uh, and the translation of this one is more like, uh, may I be the one to give you great children. Uh, uh, yeah. But she then uh, turns and, and uh, rushes down. Assuming the, the clerk doesn't say anything, Emron is oblivious. Clark will say, but you're all she's gathered. thankful. <laughs> nice. Were the adults also infected foraging underground? Did anybody mention? I'll ask. Well, the, the adults have gone. I think Imargu is the only one left. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. I don't know where it originated, though. Uh, I don't know for sure, but it's possible. We send out groups from time to time. Children, adults, it doesn't matter, as long as you can see and find. There isn't a lot that's dangerous, at least we didn't think so. And we are still exploring these ruins. Ruins, they're dwarven, yes? I think so, yes. And what you've seen, based on your worldly experience, you actually know that this is definitely dwarven made. Although they have carved over them. And as described, uh, the carvings, the orcish glyphs that are over carved over the dwarven ones aren't fresh. So they probably have been here for a while, just moving deeper and deeper underground. Uh, can I tell just by well, passing by and noticing, I guess, can I, is there anything left of the dwarven carvings that are underneath the orcish ones? Like, can I tell what they wrote over? You'd have oh, yeah. to study them. They're all over the place. Um, you do know that some of them would have just been missions, some of them would have been, um, you know, proclamations. They might have been decorative. You're not really sure unless you actually study some of them, and each one is going to be different. Okay. I'll study those, like, later. Ow! <laughs> As you're ruining the old thing experience. <laughs> As you suddenly are attacked by uh, my printer, who just sort of stabs you in your pocket. <laughs> Look at one piercing damage there. <laughs> All right, you are still gathered there. Inago looks from from to each of you. Thank you for what you have done, but there was one that ran. Yes. And there are still more. Possibly. Possibly. We need to talk to Expa. She needs to know what's going on. You seem to have dealt with this before. Not quite, but we've dealt Not with some of the problems. But yes, I agree. We should talk to Expa. Unless you all stay, stay around, he'll start walking in that direction. I'll just ask him as we're walking yeah. back for how long Expa has been in this village and trying to get any information about Expa from him as I can. Okay. Um, he tells you that uh, he himself hasn't been here very long. Um, this is a, he tends to roam quite a bit himself, but Aza has been here for a couple of generations. And for as long as he's known, Expa has always been in charge. Okay. He leads you back to the upper halls where uh, you'd met with Expa before. Um, without ceremony, he leads you pretty much directly into her sanctuary where she sits um, looking over, uh, looks like scrolls of some kind and making some notes. The familiar elderly orcish woman, intense eyes. Um, she steps up as you come in. Yes? Is uh, Magu staying here, or is he leaving us in? Minago seems to be there still. Yep. Uh, there were incidents in the medical ward. I'm, I'm not sure what term they use for medical ward, but like I'll just say where the sick people were. There was an incident. <laughs> the, so they were how bad? They transform into some creatures, and I'll describe the creatures as best as I can. 
Actually, no, I'll describe the creatures perfectly because I have a <laughs> the memory feed. <laughs> Um, she listens intently, uh, a growing scowl coming across her face. One of them is, we don't know I... where it went. It seems to have disappeared out of thin air. So it could be escape, gathering with its compatriots somewhere, or maybe it's still roaming these halls. Would you be able to look at it? I know... Inagu speaks up. I know what this looked like. Uh, I can arrange for uh, patrols and uh, expo nods. Do it now. Top priority. All training is finished until this is done. Go. And Inagu leaves. Sorry if expo and Inagu sound too much while well, like I'm still struggling with feedback here. Um, but Inagu in, it leaves immediately. Hmm. Have you ever witnessed anything like this? Or do you know what's causing it? Um, she looks serious in the, as Inagu is, uh, leaves. Um, the voice changes, but the physical body doesn't change. I have heard of these invest, infestations before. I had my suspicions, but I'm, I, there are times in a long life when you don't want to be right. These, I believe, are called the Sladi. How do you, how do you spell that? S-L-A-A-D-I. Yeah. They are vermin. They prey upon populations. They are not smart, but they are insidious. They should not be here. Mm. Could someone have introduced them? Have any... Of... Maybe. I had thought they were all gone from this plane of existence long ago. The last village we were at, we assumed this was a disease, although some form of sapient disease, perhaps. But here, it looks like they're transforming into things. It's not like most diseases I've seen. Um, How is it transmitted? Do you know? Uh, one of the attendants mentioned that they were foraging underground. It is a disease, to answer your question, but not like most. It begins small. A person gets scratched by one of them, or somehow ingests their offspring. And then it grows within them, eventually being taken over. But it usually takes time. And is this progressing faster than normal? Yes. Which, in its own, is somewhat of a blessing. If this were moving at its normal rate, more would be infected before we knew. None of you, and she looks rather sternly at all of you, none of you were scratched by these things, were you? Actually, that reminds me. Uh, yes. Um, Clargo, hold up her arm and show the wound. Not me, because I was teleporting around like a wuss. Yeah, Clark, um, at this point, you, the wound has kind of gone a little bit numb, but you can feel a sort of creeping... Uh, uh, uncomfortableness around it and kind of flowing up into your skin. When you reveal the arm, you see that around it, uh, the veins have blackened. Um, Emeryn also uh, was uh, infected. Um, 
But uh, yeah, he will go over and cast uh, Lesser Restoration on Clark immediately. Okay. The familiar sense of, of uh, a pushback strikes you once again, confirming what you had expected. That's... It's gotten strong enough that it's pushing back already with him. It was pushing back even in the the latter three cases, but only mildly. Yeah, well, I just remember before, like the previous village, the early ones, it wasn't there wasn't actually a roll. It was the later ones where it pushed back. Um, True. Almost as though, because also I remember on them, you did not see yeah. a visible wound. Well, uh, a fourteen is not going to do it. So Emran will try again uh, using his last vial of holy water. As the the uh, the energy flows out, there's little small sparks that actually uh, hit between the blue and white energy wrapping around Clark's arm and the creatures. I'm going to take the natural twenty on that one. Uh, as you as you recast the spell. This time, those blue-white tendrils turn into sharper spikes, and they lance in towards the wound. Clark, there's a moment where it almost feels as though your hand has been cut off. It's numb and unresponsive. But then the uh, on the other side of the arm, the black ichor is expelled into the air and vanishes quickly. Uh, uh, would Zacchaeus remember, is this similar to the uh, illithid parasite that infected him in the shadow? Like could there be a... what? Make a medicine check. Right. Make a medicine check. Let me just change windows here. <laughs> Where'd the dice rolling go? Yeah, into it's, the chat. It's in the chat. You got a three plus your modifiers. And now you get a seven plus a modifier. D twenty plus plus five. It just won't pull up the D twenty tab. Oh, it rolled already. Okay. Oh uh, yeah. So yeah. take so three plus I five. Mean, so that's eight. What the hell? I never rolled. Uh, this thing is way too sensitive. <laughs> I just looked at it and it rolled. Shh, it it it'll hear you. It's way too sensitive. Um. As you as you think back on it, um, you know you're you're wounded, and there was something squicky going on. But there's been a lot of squicky things going on, so it doesn't really bear a lot of resemblance. Diseases are diseases, after all; they're all the same, pretty much, and also very different. So it really leaves you with no no idea whatsoever. Uh, I'm Rune. Are you also considering the same question? Um, nope. Uh, no, I was just uh, testing out rolling from the character sheet um okay now um everyone is uh is everyone feeling a little under with the weather as well <laughs> as you kind of take stock of yourself you've been so outwardly focused for this entire time you do start to feel an itchiness in the back uh kind of between the shoulder blades almost uh, and it starts to make you also feel lots and lots of wounds <laughs> as he has four hit points left. It's true. Um, he is going to lesser restoration on himself. He has okay. no vials of holy water left, but uh, uh, 23. There we go. Okay, as you summon from within the holy waters of Alexia herself. Slot. You feel uh, the the aura around you grow, and everybody sees this blue white aura kind of pulse, two, three, four times, and finally ejecting uh, a a cloud of black, which lingers for a moment. Expo reacts. Uh, let's see. You got to make sure I got the right friggin' window. Uh, hmm. And you see her pass her hand through the uh, the cloud, uh, directing some of it into a, 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 a um, clay flask that she has, kind of bottling it up. This could prove useful for later. I tried collecting samples before, but they just disintegrated. It takes a certain trick. 
now for the rest of you. Any of the rest of you ill? No. I, I was going to cast it on myself as well. Okay. Go for it. Again, you feel that slight resistance. 17. Hmm. Uh, you feel the slight resistance, and it holds. It's somewhat difficult to direct the spell inward, it seems. And now you're even more aware of this creeping itchiness. It's like, it's like you've been wearing that that uh, that wool sweater for just a little bit too long, and all around the edges of wherever it touches, your skin starts to burn a little bit. No, nope, that didn't work. Uh, I'll give it a try. All I've got left is a level six slot. Where is there? It is. Yeah, that sucked. And as your energies pass, you feel a uh, kind of this resistance, and the the blue white energy doesn't pierce Elzera's skin. You and uh, Expa points a, a finger at Elzera. You are infected. It's not good. Uh, I will try again, because I still have fourth level slots. Or I'll ask, Expert, well, is there a trick you could use to cure her? Of the many tricks I have, healing has never been one. And none of my people here have ever mastered the talent. 22. Oh. And as Elzera casts again, this time... There are thick vines wrap around, almost cocooning Elzara with I'm additional up force. I'm holding my ring as well while and I then, cast uh, it. Uh, the, there's a, a, a second spiral of dark wood that follows the vines, and you feel yourself kind of embraced by this cocoon, which then falls and drifts away, taking with it in the thorns that pierced your skin painlessly, e dip, little bits of black ichor falls away and drifts down kind of like a, a fall dry leaf uh, leaf wind. Ugh. You have shown yourselves to be good versus this thing. I would implore you rid these caverns of it. Keep my people safe. How familiar are you with the shadow? was infected by something similar to this when we were down there but I don't know how similar it is to this slutty thing the shadow interesting if you mean where I think you mean it has older more complicated names but if you mean a place called the shadow I know of it it is a place of punishment a place of uh, rebirth, or at least it was long ago. If you are infected by something like this there, that may not be a coincidence. I got better. As have all of you, it seems. Yes, there has been, let's just say a rift that open in the shadow, so some things may have escaped. This may be where these slutty have come from. Interesting and dangerous. They were eradicated a long time ago. That they should make purchase on this world again would be bad for everything, not least of which by people. Your people, the, the orcs or the hags? She gives you a, a sort of half smile. Both. Those I lay kinship to and those I lay claim to. Well, even if we have different goals most of the time, I suppose that, yes, it is good for everybody to get rid of this slutty menace. What would you do if we were to rid the, from this area and protect these people? 
I would do what I can. There are limits even to my powers, of course. But we would be vigilant. If you define the source of it, we would make sure that it never came again, if we can. We would not want to abandon this place. It is too helpful in winter. But we would if we had to. Helpful for them or helpful for you? Helpful for what? Why are those different? Your kind normally does not feel a kinship to others so much as an ownership of them, in my experience. Why should we trust that you will have what is in the orc's best interests? She kind of walks around the room. You have dealt with some of my kind before, but we are complex sometimes. And besides, ownership does not necessarily not imply care or a desire to see them flourish. Indeed, my people tend to make a lot flourish. It costs, as all things do. But we are more upfront with our costs than most. Oh, oh, then I... No. No. Sorry? Oh, she's not wrong. <laughs> well, what just happened there? I'd like to roll insight. I rolled a 21. <laughs> ah, okay. What are you, uh, what are you trying I'm to trying figure I'm trying to figure out? out if she's basically the answer to Amrin's question. Is it self-serving or is it for, for the people? Um... She is, as she suggested, a complex being. But there is a genuine fervor when she talks about protecting her people. It's not what you would have expected. It's certainly very different from Bone Twitch. Uh, that, because Bone Twitch didn't seem to have any sort of possessiveness over anyone. Uh, but then again, you do remember that Bone Twitch was essentially still young, still unproven. It's difficult to figure out exactly why, and there's no explicit detail as to why she might feel this, but it does seem, feel genuine. It, it, is, it is not unlike what you have seen in Vatur, in terms of Alistair or some of the other uh, leaders of the council who both lead the people but also feel as though the people need to look up to them. A little more possessive, maybe, but not entirely mm. a, a different. Okay. If everyone is amenable, then did she have? Uh, she give us her name, or just she's the one that we didn't know the name of? She That's gave you right. the name Expa, yeah. which is what the Yorks know her by. Um, Then if uh, if my friends are amenable to this, I would propose this agreement. If we are to or if we solve the slotty problem, you must lead the orcs in their best interests. Even if that runs she, counter to yours. She smiles at the word agreement. Um, there's almost an eagerness that even on this older orc face, there's a moment where the illusion or the transformation seems to shift a little bit. Almost uh, almost to the yeah, larger Yeah, picked that word very specifically. And she... Uh, she uh, cocks her head in an almost unnatural way. I will have okay. you make a persuasion roll. Let's see. I'll roll from this because I don't have that one worked out. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, sorry. That's got advantage built in. So I used the... Oh, 
Huh. That's use the first one in case of the. Okay. Uh, so that, yeah. Okay. That's only a twelve. Okay. Um. She smiles. All that I have done for everyone here is in their best interests, and I would continue to do that. So, in that vein, I accept your bargain. Make an insight check. And Zachus is just like side eyeing Amrun. It's like, oh. <laughs> I get a 10 on that one. She seems to be accepting the bargain. Wondering something. Okay, no. I was just checking if there's a specific way it was showing the numbers, but it's not. Um, uh, you can you can hover over the uh, the, the total and it will be... Oh yeah, no, I was just wondering if it was showing lower than higher. Uh, but no, it... Uh, it showed higher than lower ones. So. Oh, no, no. Uh, yeah, so no, he got no insight. Yeah. No, as far as you can sure. tell, she accepted your bargain. Now, you all seem weary. You could leave now, but that might make you more at risk. If you wish, I can arrange for lodging, or you can leave. If we're going into the depths, I'm going to need to rest. I am as well. Likewise. Uh, how many people were infected before the ones we encountered? There were eight. We eliminated them before they became worse. We feared the disease more. But as they started quickly to become more and more infected, we realized we could not eliminate them all. Maybe we should have. But we will isolate them for now. We will stay vigilant. We have been on watch for this shapeshifter for a while. So this might be no different for them. We've encountered a shapeshifter before, and I will make sure there was nothing like these things. There are many things which you can shift their shape. And she kind of turns and, and kind of uh, runs her hands, kind of demonstrating herself as I, well. I just kind of go. <laughs> <laughs> Do you need anything before you leave? Or anything tonight? You wouldn't have to have a bag of holding, would you? She kind of laughs at that. I'm afraid my magics are limited in items. No. Well, it was worth a shot. Well, I no, she just need, need a place. Sorry? Lodgings and food would be good. I can make sure both are brought to you. She kind of looks off in the middle distance. And for, I think, Amrun and Zakis, actually, and Elzera, um, you kind of recognize the quiet muttering of something like a sending spell. And a minute later, a young orc male, um, dressed roughly, uh, looks like his, his uh, uh, sweat on his brow probably came running uh, kind of nods. Yes, Madam Expa, I will see to it. Follow me, and leads you out. Um, just as we're leaving, I turn around, Columbo, like one more thing. Um, <laughs> if there's, if there have been others brought back from below who were foraging, uh. If I can stay near them tonight, I may prevent any uh, infestations from taking root. You wish to stay in one of the new wards? 
that we will make for them? Yes. As you wish. And she nods and the boy seems to more or less understand what was asked of him. Is there anything more? Not that I can think of. Actually, sorry, she would have switched back to her normal expo voice at this point, but I've forgotten what that was. No, Cameron will take off after um, the others. Okay. Clark will give her a um, nod. The boy leads you. Sorry? Sorry? Clark will give her a nod and then leave. Okay. Uh, the boy leads you out into the main thoroughfare. Now you can see which is busy with activity. All of those uh, soldiers who were outside doing their training drills now seem to be forming up. You, it looks like groups of three or four are on direct patrol. Uh, Inagu is uh, among them, kind of directing them what to look for, describing, uh, as, as uh, Clark would be able to translate, describing the creatures as he had seen them, the, uh, their, their particular strange look. Also describing some of the symptoms um, uh, as well. Uh, this is a, a flutter of activity. Uh, the boy kind of leads you through this activity. Um, I'll, yell, actually, I'll yell over to Magu. Uh, if anyone is injured fighting it, bring them to us. Uh, he he nods and waves his, waves his uh, arm and make a perception check. Mm -hmm. 28, I think. It was a break. No, 11. No, that would yep. be with advantage. Okay. Uh, he nods and, and acknowledges, then turns back to the rest of them. Um, the boy leads you off uh, roughly in the same direction the wards were before. Uh, as you recall, this was an area where there were a lot of empty rooms that had been devoid of anything. Some of them had crumbled. Some of them weren't in great shape. Uh, but it's a, it's a room not far away from where the wards had been. Um, he, t he turns to you all and then turns to Clark. Uh, and speaks in Orcish. Uh, Madam Expa told me to bring you here specifically. I am to go fetch you some food. Uh, I, I guess more from the uh, the trips below will be brought to this room nearby. You requested it? Uh, Clark translates. says nothing because he doesn't understand it. Clark translates. <laughs> Sounds as, sounds like okay. Clark translated. Then, uh, uh, okay, I will meet them there then. Okay, he looks back and forth and looks for confirmation from Clark. Yeah. Okay, and then he turns and goes. The room that they've given you uh, is very sparse. It does have some uh, some uh, basically straw sacks that are presumably beds. So it was being set up as a place to stay, but there's not a lot of furniture. Um, there's some of the, the, the basic stone carved space that's in there. Uh, it looks like two stone slabs, which are probably beds, but they're short because they seem to be dwarven sized. Uh, otherwise, it's all smooth stone. Um, looks as though the, the room had, they had taken some time to, to, to carve the room initially. And then when the Yorks came in, they didn't really change anything so much as firm up the door, um, which itself is a simple uh, wooden uh, uh, wooden door. Um, after about uh, a half an hour or so, um, the boy returns with two large uh, wicker baskets, essentially, full of uh, foods, hard cheeses, uh, some, some uh, uh, roasted meats, some roasted, or actually raw vegetables, it's a pretty uh, basic uh, food stuff. There's a jug of water, a fairly large uh, jug of water with that as well, and drops that off for you. Uh, turns to Clark. Anything else? He looks nervous. You folks want anything else? I'm good with this. That should be fine. Um, can I tell that he looks nervous? Pretty it's pretty obvious not yeah sure it, it you're not sure why whether it's just you know you are clearly outsiders that he's dealing with or whether it's the heightened state of uh, tension which everything is under right now 
I'm not really sure why, but it's clear that he's kind of bouncing from foot to foot, looking at all of you, kind of looking, listening oh, a little Clark. bit. Is he okay? Uh, Clark will ask, what worries you, child? Um, he looks up at you a little bit embarrassed to be called out uh, for it, but um, there are rumors there are rumors that we have been invaded, but no one knows. Invisible creatures have turned us against each other. And then the strangers, you arrive. My suggestion, young one, is that you stay vigilant and know that we are here to help. Make a persuasion. Sure. Um, let's see how this works. Mm -hmm. There you go. <laughs> Not very persuasive. It comes off maybe a little more gruffly than you ex than you had intended, uh, and he kind of uh, backs up a little bit from you, looking thoroughly embarrassed uh, and nodding quickly. Uh, yes, yes, I am sorry to have brought shame. I will, and he tried to straighten his straightens his back up, uh, still looking rather uncertain in his face. I will, I will be the warrior I was born to be. Is there is there anything else? And he seems eager to leave. Clark will hand him his bow. He does not look damaged. Do you know what this is? Yes. It was. Yes. Serve me well. Find some arrows, and it'll serve you well. He looks surprised and looks at the bow. Which? What is the quality of this it's bow? Good. Is it a normal That's bow it. or just good? Okay. Um. He uh, looks back and forth at you and kind of a puzzled expression on his face, uh, but again straightens himself up and uh, nods in salute to you. I will. I will kill them all. And he kind of turns okay. and runs. Uh, Clark will translate, basically. This lad is worried that uh, his community is doomed. I told him we're here to help. Do you have any other ranged weapons? Uh, Clark pulls out uh, his uh, sacks and holds it up. I believe I have a regular longbow in my quiver. And I give it to him. <laughs> Clark will take it. And it when we yeah, were this, level this. one. This, this longbow, uh, far longer than the quiver it's pulled out of, nonetheless, is extracted. Um, there is not a lot of light here, um, so you may have to do something about that. For those of you who can't see in the dark... We can all see in the dark. Is only, you can all see in the dark? Well, never mind then. Uh, they haven't added any additional light. Although, when the door is closed, there's no light sources. For convenience, so drift globe. Uh, that helps. I'm mean, just going to immediately start. Um, well, he'll have a little bit to eat and then go into meditating. He's tired. Are the rest of you doing anything? He just writes down what's going on the place in general, the events that have happened. Because when he gets back to the library, Zach is going to want to look up like what dwarven settlement this was. There's a there's a part of you which is looking at your own notes and going, you know. This is probably going to make a yeah. really good book someday. And it kind of think towards the idea of going on, the, looking through the shelves of the great library. And there's that section, which is written by Zachis and Lena Porter. Maybe like a <laughs> whole section of your own, maybe someday. Of course, you have to survive first. But... Step one, live. Well, step one is write. Step two is live. <laughs> yeah. Someone can find your notes later. 
<laughs> uh, did I hear Elzera or Clarks that do something? No. No. I, I use meditate. Druidcraft to like melt fuse on onto different foods. <laughs> okay. Just bring up the cheese is is a little bland, but there's a little spice in it. Uh, it it's mostly like a hard, uh, like a hard cheddar, very very mild hard cheddar, but with little bits of spice thrown in here and there. It's very filling, um, a little bit heavy. Uh, it it doesn't melt all that well. It takes a bit more effort than you're expecting to melt it, but it goes well with the the uh, the heavy bread. Uh, and you begin to meditate. What is what is uh, Amrun meditating on? Does he have a focus for the meditation? Or is it no mind technique? Um, mostly just, well, I mean, presumably focusing on the uh, his holy symbol. Okay. Clark? Uh, I'm just, just going to eat, eat, rest. Maybe clean up his weapons. Okay. Begin the sort of regular ritual of laying out the weapons and inspecting each one of them. Periodically, I look around the room up there. to see if there's anything. Sorry. Periodically, I'll, I'll look no, around okay. the room too. Cl Is it lagging? Or? Okay. What are you looking for? Just any dwarven markings i mean if, if we were to be sent to this room specifically I, i'm i'm wondering if there's a reason for that Just snooping around you know like when you get to a hotel um, room you like open all, all the drawers and like look inside did anybody forget anything just looking at stuff sure uh make an investigation water, roll. right that was 20 this was a plus 10 Find the window again. Hey. Ooh, okay. Kind of looking around the room, the drift globe hovering in the middle. You see Amrun settling into the the uh, relaxation, clutching onto his holy symbol, kind of in, in peace, uh, looking serene. Uh, Clark laying out each of his weapons. It's always a little surprising just how many weapons Clark has. Not a lot right now, unfortunately. Um, because the, and they're uh, you got you got more than most people would expect. Um, and then even then, uh, the care with which you're cleaning each one of them, uh, so they basically gleam and catch a little bit of light in the uh, in the from the drift globe itself. And. As you look around, the first thing that strikes you is this room is not just carved, it's smoothed. It's almost as though every sign of anyone who had ever been here has been removed. Uh, and you start to run your fingers over the walls and note that they are unnaturally smooth. There are two um, raised stone beds. They are dwarven size, but is anybody taking those or is anybody sitting on those? I'm sit on the floor. I'm just walking around looking at stuff. Yeah. Okay. I might okay. sit on one. Okay. So there's one where Elzara is kind of kind of sitting and in, in getting into her meditation, uh, or chewing on her bread or you whatever it is cheese. that she's uh, that melted the cheese onto. Uh, and you kind of run your fingers along the edge of it, and just around the edges of this, you see a spot that looks like it was missed by whoever had, had cleaned this, this room. Uh, and it's only, uh, it looks like a couple of dwarven runes. Uh, looks like it was uh, uh, the, the first half of a name of some kind, maybe. Uh, it is the, the dwarven rune for Tell. So that would be the sort of okay. pronunciation of it. And you're thinking Tell names. Well, there was Lord Telmar. T-E-L-L -L or T-E-L? T-E-L. 
but you don't really know much more about it. If you were able to match that rune up with something else, you'd be able to probably find out which name it was. It's not a unique rune, but it is part of the name. I'll utter that out loud and point it out to my friends. The ones that are not meditating anyway. I mean, yeah, I think ever, either they're meditating, eating, or focusing on their weapons so they don't really notice all Alzara, that. Is there anything <sighs> on your bed? Aside from yourself, I mean. Me. Oh. There's a roll here. You make an investigation roll or a perception roll. If it's a quick look or you're poking around. Elzara really doesn't care. She's just like, I'm sitting, I'm hungry. Just a perception check then as you kind of glance. It should be a little rougher than the rest of the bed. Mm. 22. You, you glance around and around the edges of the bed where it hits the, the butts up against the wall. It does look as though there's still a f- little bit of filigree, not full words, but a little bit of, of runic carving. Um, make a history check as you sort of notice it. Oh, oh we've lost a Clark. History, me or Elzara? Elzara, because she saw this specifically. 22. It has the rough look of formal dwarven runes. Not not recent, very, very old. Um, get, the, get the impression kind of as you trace them in your mind throughout the rest of the bed. Uh, this would have been probably the, the, uh, the location for someone of some some stature it's not just a a random room this seems to have been maybe royal chambers at one point or part of royal chambers it's hard to say i don't know that looks fancy oh can i see and i'll just oh. go over <laughs> can i tell it out and helping yeah. my cheese yeah she points it out you can make a history check as well I'm like looking for physical dice, but <laughs> I do not have physical dice side faces. <laughs> Three is also ten. Hey. Ooh, natural 20. I also just nice. rolled a natural twenty, so <laughs> Oh jeez, I didn't realize that. It's weird it didn't come up as I as, like roll uh... twenty so far. In the same, same color. Well, you guys are spot on. Okay. Well, you wouldn't have noticed it otherwise. Uh, yeah. So as she points it out and starts tracing it and, and tracing beyond the pattern, almost as though she can see or sense some of the natural structure that would have been there. Um, and I don't, she didn't really say much about it, but from the way that she's tracing it and from you kind of p- picturing it in your mind and flashing back to some of the, the, uh, the, very old annals in the library. Uh, there was a, a book you cataloged about three years ago on, on uh, dwarven history. And recently when you went and, and talked to them about the returning some of that dwarven armor, there was some talk that came up. Um, this is, this is a, a, or would have been from what you imagine, um, because of the complex carvings they would have done on what is simply a, a, a essentially a bed, this would be the the uh, essentially the bedchambers of visiting royalty. Uh, this was and because there was actually a name carved on it, this would have been visiting royalty who was expected to be here on a regular basis. That kind of casts the idea of this being a regular dwarven city a little bit sideways, because it's not just a dwarven stronghold. This was a royal city. This was probably a capital at one point. I'll just blurt so, that out. That's yeah. This well, essentially, what you just said—that it would have been like royal bed chambers or visit chambers for for visiting royalty. I need to find out which city this is. 
Yeah, none none of the cities you know of would fit the description though. There were from the the histories, uh, like this doesn't track to a particular history, so this must be yeah. extraordinarily ancient. Um, this predates the the dwarven histories you've read, and some of those go back a couple of thousand years. Can I translate what the dwarven dwarven rune on Elzara's bed says? It's not language; All it's right. more honorific. It's more of the beginning of scroll work and other and other fancy stuff. But they wouldn't have taken the time to do it. As you look a little closer, you do find just the edge of where this is probably was socketed with a gem as well. So kind of imagining and sitting back a little bit, this was probably, and from some of the, the descriptions of these ancient rooms, to honor even a visiting noble, they would have had essentially gold-encrusted beds with gems. It, it, to anybody but a dwarf, it would sound extraordinarily uncomfortable. Uh, but to a dwarf, it would have been the height of, of respect, that they literally would be sleeping on cool. gold and gems. That does mean that a room like this, undisturbed, would be extraordinarily yeah. valuable. So I'll definitely make some notes of that in my little book and make it a point when, I, when if I get back to the library, to look into this some more and also maybe ask... A, Expo, what this used to be, or what city this used to be, assuming she'll tell me. It's like discovery <laughs> mode, engage, but it's time to go to bed. It's like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so it happens to me every night. I just get engaged with everything and realize <laughs> I've got to go to bed. But satisfied by the, the, the food that's brought, the water is, is fresh. Um, it's not salt water, or it's not distilled water, so they must have a spring somewhere nearby, or maybe it's there's not one. Contaminated, is it? Um, are you going to check? Well, Expo mentioned that it could be ingested, the parasite, so now I'm paranoid. Okay. Uh, what do you that do that to water check? should be safe, right, guys? You know how Expo mentioned uh, that the parasite could infect people if they ingested it? What if it's in the water supply? Well, then you could drink this water, and uh, no, I don't say food and water because I can't. I'm at all those spell slots. Well, I drink my water skin. <laughs> I'm just wondering if anybody else would know how to check. I forgot I was eating pretzels. Um, I just cast uh, purify food and water as a ritual. Okay. Uh, little tendrils of green algae form on the surface of the water and then evaporate, leaving a nice fresh smell uh, in the air. The Here. water looks clean, looks I'll clear. Drink some water with my food. Okay. Tastes fresh and cool Make and refreshing. <laughs> <laughs> that comes in the morning. Anyway, uh, do you all just go to sleep? Are you taking watches? Or are you going to do anything different? I mean, usually Amrin and I alternate. Yeah. Okay. Amrun, as you go deeper within yourself for the evening, getting deep and deep into the meditation, thinking upon the, the mighty power of Paluxia, you feel connected, strangely, in a different way than you have for a while. It is almost as though you can feel the water of the oceans shifting and shaking. It's, it's as though you're sitting on the deck of a ship, not on solid stone, not on the, the ground itself. You get increasingly this sense of larger and larger connection. And it is as though you've extended your senses out to miles, dozens of miles, hundreds of miles and then it stops as though bound by a wall as though as though the connection was nothing more than to a lake bound by a land on all sides and there's a sense of sadness and purpose that comes from your connection wordless but a sense of of Necessity, but also weariness, a sense of of uh, self doubt, strangely enough, as well as a passage of time. 
when this larger sense floods your, your thoughts until you find yourself slowly drifting back into your body once again. Huh. I wonder what that meant. I'm sure I'll find out eventually. Hmm. Um, they haven't brought their foragers back here, have they yet? There's been no knock at the door since they uh, since the boy left. Uh, I'll wait until it's uh, Elzera's shift. Then I'm going to go out and look for him. When you come back to yourself, you you get a sense that it's been enough time, and you are fully rested. Is there still time uh, still time for me to do stuff before I go to bed, or am I already sleeping? Depends on how much sleep eight you hours. Get. <laughs> well, you know, between uh, Amrun and Elzera, yeah. they take four hour shifts, so you can either sleep in beyond uh, what Elzera is going to be uh, 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 doing, or you can go to sleep essentially close to when Amrun started. Yeah, I'll get the full eight hours. I was just thinking, like, I should do ascending, but if, okay. I'll do it tomorrow. Okay. Um, yes. Clark, once you've cleaned your weapons and the ritual yep. has been completed, are you just yep. going to curl up and go to sleep? Okay. As you sleep, you find yourself standing on the edge of a precipice. A vast, dark valley below. You can't see anything in it, but you can hear voices. Dozens of voices. Each of them calling out for rebirth. Each of them asking, is it time? And the answer from above you. From the larger of the two moons, which seems to have crested over this this mountainside you're on, the answer radiates from it, wordless. Soon, I have my champion. And you find yourself waking, refreshed. Long rest. And yeah. Elzara is taking her her sleep. Yep. As you drift off, you have a great night's sleep. <laughs> the ring around your finger warms, and for a moment, you imagine yourself held aloft by the branches of the mighty tree, Yggdrasil, or as you know him by another name. Your husband. And it's as though you fell asleep in his arms. If you two have kids, would he be Yiggy Pop? Yes. Does Zacchaeus have any trippy <laughs> dreams? Zacchaeus falls cool. asleep. That works. Um I uh, has those actually make a uh, make a charisma saving throw. You're muted. All right. There we go. Still muted. <laughs> I just remembered it's a plus zero. I have no mouse on this laptop and it's driving me up the wall. Oh, there's a two. <laughs> you hear the alarm go off. It is the call to class. You're late. You slept in. And you rush down the hallway. You sit down in your seat. The exam has already begun. And you realize you're not wearing a robe. And you wake up in cold sweat. Shut up. I'm assuming that's after eight hours, though, right? <laughs> that is a full rest for everyone, yes. <sighs> My robes. My ro oh, okay. Oh, where? Oh, right, right. Oh. 
I'm just gonna sleep in a little bit. But then I can't fall back asleep. <laughs> the drift globe, I, is it, did you leave it on? Does it stay on? I forget if it lasts for Yeah, I think it's only for an hour, so I would have probably turned it off as soon as I okay. settled down. All right. Probably instinctively when you first burst awake, you turn on the the drift globe and everybody's <laughs> eyes have to adjust. Everybody's like, ah. Sudden bright light. Why? You have not been... You have not been disturbed in the night. You have uh, been left alone, it seems. But you all come awake, all come arrested. Uh, no one came to the door, Amrun, during the night. Mm -hmm. If you poke your head out, there doesn't seem to be anybody there. Nobody in the room next okay. door either. I sit down and have some rations. All right, seems like a mm. rational thing to do. I need to have that button. And you have cheeses and all right, stuff you all wake up. put in the bag of clothing. Okay. The cheese probably has already been preserved so much that it's not going to change all that much. Although the part you melted, maybe. Um, but the bread is a little getting a little crusty. But yeah, you have that preserved. You probably have enough that all of you could have one more meal from that. If you chose to eat from it. I'm going to stick with my preserved meats and such. We don't know where the contamination is coming okay. from. So. I'll have some food because, I mean, I got some yesterday, so I might as well like keep going. The water's purified, though. I mean, there you go. I, I can do the food, too. It's food and drink, so. Excellent. If you don't mind. I probably, but the, the food I probably, was. The food would have been preserved at the same time. He just only drank yeah. the water, so. I didn't mention it. There's a certain volume. All right. You all wake up. There is a knock at your door. I open the door. Uh, you see that uh, grizzled veteran who had been the attendant in one of the other rooms uh, before, one missing an arm and has multiple scars, uh, but who could speak broken common. They come to your door. Um, Hello? Yes. You are awake? Good. Come with me. Then he starts to I walk follow. down the hallway. Um, our, he leads you through. Okay, let's sure. He doesn't seem to be slowing down, so you might want to call out for him, but he doesn't seem to be thinking about okay. that. I jam my preserved bacon back into my uh, pocket and head out. Pocket. pocket bacon. It is It is a thing. All right. He leads you out, and again, much like last night, there still seems to be fury of activity. Um, you don't see Inagu today. He probably is still asleep, after all. He was up into the late night probably working. Um, but leads you through all of this. I am to take you to where foragers were. Did they not return? No more came back. So they disappeared. He shrugs. Probably not his concern directly. He leads you into an older part of the city, down several flights of stairs. You kind of get the impression that this city was built in layers. And as you go down further, there's more and more signs of it being destroyed. Almost as though massive battles or mighty magic had happened here further down uh the uh the rooms become less distinct what were probably walls at one point or carved out sections are again exploded there are signs of dwarven runes here almost as though uh they had not inhabited this part three four five flights down each one getting progressively more and more like rubble until he gestures this was as far as they had gone. He looks more and more nervous as you get down, but seems to be covering up as best as he can. 
He's carrying a short sword at his side. Mm -hmm. It's not drawn. And were there like any dwarven carvings or markings that I might be able to translate and recognize on the way down? Yeah, you can stop and take a look if you want. Um, the the dwarf in front of you doesn't seem to be, or sorry, the uh, the orc in front of you doesn't seem to be slowing at all. Almost as though he's eager to get you where to go, and then does not want to stick around. I'll just try to like uh, remember me... them for later. Okay. Yeah. Do you understand dwarven? Let me triple check that. Okay. But... Yep, dwarvish. Yep. Okay. Um. Sorry, I'm looking at two different screens. Uh, he, uh, or you've seen numerous carvings, again, kind of along this, the lines of uh, announcements, uh, or not announcements so much as street signs and, uh, and shop signs. There are public blessings. There are indications of, of uh, directions to go. You seem to be heading down further and further into, do, 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 where's my list here? into scrolling as fast as I can um, sort of differently named living spaces as you get further and deeper down it looks as though they were more elaborate but also more and more damaged almost as though uh, the fighting was more intense the further down it went but also the fanciness of the place was also more except for the ironic part of the rooms you were at top. Thinking about it a little bit, you realize that while there were reception rooms up top for visiting uh, uh, royalty or nobility, uh, the actual nobility of this place was probably further down. So it's kind of one of those things where, especially if you're at war, uh, or if you have hostility and you still want to have a peace conference, you keep all the really fancy people up top, but you keep them away from your actual nobility. <laughs> Gotcha. Um, so are we in a hallway right now or a room or? Essentially, it's a wide hallway, about 25 feet wide. Uh, and he's gesturing towards a narrowing at the end. It looks as though there's some rubble piled up against an opening. So did they go through there or? That's where they were going next. That's where they were supposed to be going. And you can see that there are smaller holes around the rubble where probably some of it was pulled away so some of the smaller people, children presumably, could actually go. And it's the hole's big enough for us to fit through, yes? It's going to be a squeeze, especially for uh, Zakis, just because you're so tall, yeah. but you are fairly thin. So uh, you, could, you could potentially fit through. Sound good. Yeah, we might want to move some of the rubble out of the way. But mm. How long would it take to clear some of the rubble just to make a slightly bigger hole? Uh, depends on what you're using. Because, you know, there are magics at your disposal or you can just be heaving rocks. The Most of the rocks are fairly large, the ones that remain. The smaller ones have already been pulled out of the way. It does seem like an unstable pile, though, as well. Can we tell if there's anything on the other side? How long does the tunnel look? Uh, it's hard to say. Looks yeah. like stairs on the other side. Um, the uh, orcs that's with you uh, kind of looks nervously around. I should go back. What happened here? Um, I don't know. That's what yes. you're finding out. I was yes. hoping for any clues. That's all. I don't know. They were sick. My kin, sick. The ones that went down here were sick? This is where they were. So they were probably attacked by whatever made them sick. A slubby. I'm going to go check out the hole. Clark will okay. follow. It's dark. It's dark on the other side. 
um, you could probably squeeze through. You can see that basically it looks as though, um, sorry, make an investigation check. Sixteen. Okay. Um, these rocks and boulders that are here didn't fall from the ceiling. They were piled here. Almost as though they wanted to try to obscure this exit that goes deeper. Or they wanted to steal something uh, in. Hmm. Well, I guess we guess we better go in and check. Yeah, uh, great. Who yeah. wants to go first? Amarin, with his pathetic oh, well. strength, will try uh, moving rocks out of the way because he's wearing big, heavy armor, so uh, he's going to need a nice big hole to go through. Okay, athletics check. Hmm. You start to grip on some of these rocks. Ooh. Yeah, you're <laughs> feeling you're feeling like rested, and then suddenly there's that sort of pop that shouldn't have popped wherever that was in my body. Um, these rocks are denser than you expected, and you kind of grip onto the top, and you move, but the rock doesn't seem to. Um, what's the ground like here? Is it worked stone? Yes. Yeah. Looks like cobblestone, although a lot of it has been disturbed by the. Whatever went on here. Um, hmm. I can't really do much without using a wild shape for this. It does look like you can probably squeeze through, but it is going to be tight. You know, if I had some help, we could push the rocks out of the way. <laughs> yeah, I'll help out. Okay. Make a, uh, a uh, an athletics check with advantage as the two smallest people in the group decide to move rocks. So who's the natural one? Woo! Which is All a total right. of 20. So, uh, between Amrun kind of pulling and, and uh, Zakis, how is Zakis helping? Well, if I do this quick mental calculation, if I push, like, based on all the physics involved in the background, if I push, like, on that specific part of the rock, it's going to help I'm ruin like, dislodge it out of the way faster. So he's kind of convincing the rock that it should move. It should move. It should move. And then suddenly the rock does move as you take one of the larger boulders and kind of roll it a couple of feet out of the way. Ha -ha. Uh, and and uh, sure enough, that opens up most of the path. Uh, you you'd still, you'd be able to get through. You would not be able to move quickly. Basically, it'd be a difficult terrain now but you could move through it. Cool. On the other side, you see a staircase. The staircase is more narrow than you might have expected, but clearly worked dwarven stone. Uh, the uh, pathway uh, is labeled uh, as uh, um, essentially, how would you put this? Um, authorized personnel only, essentially. What? Oh, authorized, okay. Uh, yeah, it kind of reveals a little bit there. And you do see stairway go stairwell going down. Essentially, it's single file going downward. So, I'll need a marching order. Not first. Let's see if No one works. claims it, so I'm going first. I'm going so, to... if we go over to roll 20, let's see if this actually works. Cuz I'll put you on a map. Let's see if I can actually get all this working. All right. And I just realized there is a kind of a problem in that I don't have an icon on the map. So you're the DM, you are the map. I know it's kind of weird. I mean, it is five to so, six if we wanted to take a little break now and then while you can find your icons. I think I've got something I can use here. Uh, let me just try this part. Okay. Two, 
too many keyboards. That's what I realized. All right. So there will be. Oh, I got to give it to myself. Sorry, folks, for the uh, delay. For those of you who might be uh, trying to figure out what the hell is going music. on, so am I. Yeah. Okay, that might actually work. So there will be an orc that will be seen on the map. That's just the GM. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's not actually an orc on the map. Uh, if you go to roll 20, you should see a big yep. black screen at the moment. So now I, I have to. No, uh, has sight. So I'll see if this changes for you guys each as I try to give you all sight. Trying out the uh, fog of war. Uh... Again, wrong keyboard. Okay, I think this is starting to work. So as you as you descend downward in this narrow hallway, uh, do I have all of you? I'm just gonna close the door. Yeah, there's me, Elzara, presumably Clark, and then uh, I don't see. Uh, No, that's actually me. Whoa. That 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 orc that's there. All right, I can see myself on the camera again now that I've shut the first blind. Okay. I see a fog here. Yeah. Okay. So, down in the uh, lower, lower middle, approximately. Oh, go ahead. Ah. You should see a, an aura around yourself. I think I just have to add uh, Zach is here. Okay, that's why I don't see anything. <laughs> yeah, sorry. It's, it's a, sl a slow no process to getting used to... Uh, to this part. Oh, Clark disappeared. All right. There you go. I would ask you not to move through walls. I don't think I have a restriction on whether, where you can move or not. Uh, but you're all kind of in that uh, hallway. Uh, the GM viewpoint character is just that little orc that's there. So... It's not actually okay. right there. And I will switch our overhead as well. As soon as I can get rid of stupid pop-up that appeared. <sighs> Whoever invented pop-ups. Well, I wouldn't go that far. I'd settle for a lot of slow torture of pops, probably. Mm -hmm. pop-up is not going away. Go away. It's exactly right over the controls I need. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Yeah, well. Go mm. away, pop-up. Mm. Copies of this. Okay. Ah. 
Yeah. So all you will really see is that line of you guys right now because you're all behind door. As I'll suggest in a moment here. There we go. So you see uh, a hallway which uh, extends downward. And at the very end of the hallway, there is a doorway. Looks like a very thick, uh, ancient wooden door, well preserved. This one covered in uh, dwarven runes. And indeed, uh, there's embedded uh, uh, gems that work into the scrollwork of the pattern. Uh, the uh, description of the on the door essentially is Royal States Room. And it looks like it was an offshoot of this particular room. Uh, ready? Sure. It is. It, it is a narrow hallway, so you're basically uh, in in order. Uh, but the door is in front of you, and uh, I'm ruining you're up front of okay. the door. My friends know that it says Royal State Room. Um, do you detect any magics on this door? Not right now. I, I could. It would take time. So I could cast detect magic as a ritual, but it would take 10 minutes. I open the door. If there's a fireball, we'll find it. Okay. The, I'm, this is why I'm glad I'm at the, the end. The heavy door appears to be... The heavy door appears to be solidly locked. Hmm. Anyone know how to pick locks? Yeah. What was that? Sorry. I think she can also Clark can get through to pick the lock. That might make sense. Everybody back out. Back up. Back up. Okay, you kind of awkwardly shift around and move there as Clark moves forward. It's an unconventional locking mechanism. Um, you don't see a keyhole as such. It looks more like a series of gems with some sort of mechanism underneath. After poking around for a while, is that your your uh, your uh, pick lock roll? Yep, Clark. Wow. Okay. After poking around with the, uh, the door for a while, you kind of realize, yeah, no, you, you're pretty awesome at it. You realize there's an underlying mechanism uh, that seems to be still in operation beneath it. Uh, you find uh, little little edges around the gems that are there, probably that were meant for tools so they could actually fix the lock. But you find your long, slender pick uh, lock-picking tools fit around them and manage to kind of jam the mechanism enough such that the rest unlocks. And with a very uh, loud, uh, creaking uh, uh, shimmer or shiver, the whole door kind of shakes a little bit. The, the loud guggle of the door unlocking happens, and dust flies off the door. But it is unlocked now. Yay. Shuffle, it's like a shuffle. left out of breath, because there's thankfully no fireball flying at us. <laughs> Not at the moment. <laughs> Uh, so, Clark, you step through the door, or are you going to step backwards and let somebody else open the I'll door? I'll open the door. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Okay. You, as you push open the door, water flows in towards your feet. It's cold, and there's an o ominous smell. You can kind of step forward five feet if you want to see into the room. don't know if I can remove that. Hmm. I cannot see the room, Captain. All right, still working on this here. Okay, so select. Like, how fast is the water flowing? Is it like torrential, or is it like, is it like just water in the basement kind of thing? It seems to be okay. stagnant. Hmm. Oops, I just moved everything by accident. There we go. Uh. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. I will do it another way. Yeah, I think you can either select an area to have the fog removed. 
Cool. There we go. Ooh, got a skeleton in front of me. So as you step forward, um, you do see indeed numerous bodies all kind of piled up towards the door. So let me describe the, the, the scene. Immediately as the door opens, water flows outward from it, like the water had been piled up against the door for some time. The water is cold and has a sort of rancid air, as does everything of inside here. There is a, a shift in pressure and shift in, in, uh, in smell, as you realize this door has not been breached for quite some time. In front of you, in the center of this oblong room, is a pool of light water, not very deep, maybe an inch or two at most. It's stagnant, it's not moving anywhere, but it, it seems to be coming from a, uh, a low fountain across the hall from you. On each side of the fountain are two statues, one of a man and one of a woman on the left and right. Uh, these statues seem to be facing the doorway. Around you, however, as you step in, in the water, you see numerous bodies, almost a dozen of them, mostly dwarven-sized, but a few longer and thinner. Their bones have been picked long clean, and all the remains of whatever they were wearing is in tatters. They do not appear to be armed. Along the left and right of the room, you see two doorways, one to the left and one to the right, each flanked by two pillars, and there are benches along the outside. For all intents and purposes, if this room were lit properly and without the water and the bodies, it would probably be a stately room where people would be visiting, a waiting room as such. Well, um, I'm going to step to the side out of the corpses and out of the doorway so people can come in. Um, I'm going to, I guess I'm just going to investigate the room. I'll investigate some of the bodies, like judging by the clothes, are these nobles? Well, probably. And do they have any jewelry? And were the bones picked clean or is it just, wouldn't? was it natural process or did something pick it clean? Okay. Um, when you say investigate uh, the room, what do you mean? I'm investigating the room for evidence of where the orcs may have gone. So looking at the doors to see if one of them seems to have been opened recently. Are there footsteps? Uh, is there fresh blood? I mean, the door to here hasn't been opened. So how else would have they gotten to this point? Mm. Well, unless it was closed after them. It would have disturbed some of the dust. I have a question. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Just for the GM, does this door lock in or out? Um, um, you see a similar locking mechanism on the other side as well, so you could lock okay. it from either Thank side. You. So I will have investigation rolls from Zakis and from Amrun. Sick. All right. Okay. Amrun, you're looking around the space and trying to figure out uh, what might have happened here. Um, but at Alzera's suggestion, there was dust on the door when it came in. Now, that dust could have been moved back there before, but... It probably means they didn't come in mm. this way. But this is where that other person indicated they were supposed to be looking, which means maybe they were moved by some other means. You also look back in the water and you see that your footsteps have been traced out of the water. So if anybody had stepped out of it or through yeah. that, they would have been traced. We're in the spot, wrong spot, folks. Are we, though? Zakis, looking at the bodies, a couple of things strike you. One... The clothing has deteriorated in almost entirely, but what f few scraps you find are extraordinarily high quality. Uh, it almost falls apart in your hands, however. 
uh, the the position of the bodies is strange. They don't seem like they've been disturbed so much as this is where they fell. It looks as though, looking at the way the bodies are shaped and the way they're, they're falling, they were all gathering towards the door to try to escape and died here. The other thing you kind of notice that's a little bit weird is the water is not flowing out of the fountain. It's flowing well. into it. So the water's recent? Hmm. Well, if we're looking for the people, then... Uh... They died trying to escape this room. Something happened here. Just a second, I'm going to close the door. People are home. Right. Hmm. Do I recognize the uh, statues by any chance? Yeah, I'll you can take a closer look. Make a history check. Whoa! I totally read about those people. <laughs> um, the labels on the bottom of them uh, were are almost missed at first, just because there's a layer of dust that's been built up on, on them. Um. Just writing a couple of things down. Um, but you do see the labels of them, uh, and again, kind of uh, obscured a little bit. Age has not been kind to these statues, but they seem to be the Lord Bendrick and Lady Talu. They're not names you're specifically familiar with, although there are more than one la Lord and Lady Talu in history. It looks as though the way they're positioned, these were probably the ones who ran the city. And there was probably meant to be a greeting for people coming in. The style is very, very old. Uh, almost as though it is uh, almost before any of the dwarven styles you've seen so far in common usage. From an archaeological point of view... This is actually a tremendous discovery. Cool. So Zachus probably just has his like whoa face on right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, if they're not here, we should probably go find them. Yeah. And hope whatever killed these people isn't still isn't still here. There are doors to the left and right of you. So if they didn't come in here, we'd... I mean, where... Hmm. Everyone's going to go back out the hallway. Okay. It appears as though the door has been locked. The room door or the... So, he doesn't actually make it. The room, the door into this room has been locked again behind you. Shaker, 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 shaker. You see the um, mechanism which Clark had pointed out recess into the door. Hmm. So is this a trap? I look over at Clark. Uh, is that something I can tell? Uh, you can take a closer look at the door to try sure. to figure out what happened. Okay, make a perception check. Uh, one moment. Are these uh, benches? Okay. Yes. Stone. stone benches, actually, in this case. They look like wood because I can't do stone. Even 20. All right, as you inspect the uh, door and look at the mechanism, it looks as though uh, there is sort of a double locking mechanism oh. on this as though it is, is there designed to present, present uh, a, a, a safety gate for anyone coming to flee inward. But it was activated prior to this. 
So you managed to find the right en activation to enter, but they could not find the one to exit. So it looks as though this is acting mm. as intended. One could consider this to be a trap in that sense, but essentially, uh, if you were in danger and fleeing, you probably would have come behind this door and it automatically closes behind you. Mm. Right. Can we get back out, Claire? Uh, with some doing, probably. Shouldn't we look around first, though? Possibly. Well, I mean, we're looking for the orcs, but if the orcs can't have come through here, then, I mean, this is a nice room, but I'm not sure if this is where we're supposed to be. Fair enough. What if uh, somebody wants us here? We'll attempt to do the thing thing again. I could not hear that. Sorry. I didn't hear what either of you said. Cody or Max. Let's start with uh, Zach. I'm just wondering, what if somebody wants us here? Possibly Expo. What if there were no disappeared orcs and she just wanted to send us here for whichever reason? I mean, hags aren't exactly trustworthy. Yeah, but I mean, given our group, she could just tell us hey, there's a room down there that might involve this stuff, and we would have gone. Yeah, I suppose. That's Clark looking to uh, pick yeah. the lock. Yeah, the mechanism is not unfamiliar to you. It's a little harder now that the controls have recessed into the door. Uh, it requires kind of forcing a little bit around the surprisingly solid, s solid wood uh, the wood has not aged, weirdly enough, which probably indicates some sort of magical enchant enchantment or so. But you kind of have to jam the tools in. You actually uh, end up kind of having to hammer some of the tools to get them in place now to the deeper mechanism. But sure enough, you're able to tweak the mechanism just enough that the door once again shutters and then opens. As it shutters and opens, it releases more dust. Uh, almost as though the dust is reset every time the door has been opened. So they might have come in here. But we don't, uh, we didn't see any wet footprints, though. Maybe those True. reset, too. I'll look at our own footprints that we just made. Are they still there, or do they show signs of disappearing a little faster than they should? As you look closer to where the watery steps are, you notice that the water kind of drifts back into the pool. And the ground is dry where you were stepping again. That no. is not normal behavior <laughs> for water to you. Um, I'm going to take a vial, an empty potion vial, and take a sample of the water. Okay. You lower the vial into the water and kind of try to scoop some up. You find it difficult to push into the vial. Make a dexterity... Let's see, actually make this a sleight of hand. hand. Let's do. 14. Okay. Um, as you kind of scoop it, the first time you scoop it in, you notice that you didn't capture anything in the vial. So you kind of angle it and try to get it. And it behaves almost more like, I'm trying to remember how, there's a liquid I'm trying to think of. It's not quite coming to me, but... Uh, it is almost as though it more like jello, where every time you kind of scoop some up, it actually pulls the rest of it out. And it takes you a few seconds or a few minutes to, to kind of scrape with one hand and kind of shove it in there and then very quickly uh, close it off. Even as you uh, sort of pull the vial away, you feel a sort of resistance, almost as though it wants to return back to the rest. Uh, Eric, could that be a water elemental of some sort? I don't know. Can I make like a nature check or something? Um, more like an arcana check. I was more thinking nature because I literally can become one of them. Yeah, that's fair. I'll allow it. Um, it's distinctly a possibility that this could be a water elemental. You've never seen one in this particular form. Um, generally, they don't give up their parts of themselves. 
but there's nothing formed about the water that's here. It is, though, it is all connected, but not in the same coherent way a water elemental usually is. So, yes, it could be. It may not be. Is it still moving in the vial right now? I mean, it's kind of behaving okay. with gravity at the moment. No, but I'm, I mean, like, asking Elzera, like, if she fills up, oh. like, as, she, as she's holding the vial towards the fountain. Towards the fountain. As you kind of move the vial off of being over the water itself, the, it does seem to slide up the side of the vial rather than be, behave uh, just as gravity would detect, dictate. So it's almost like it's alive, like the water in the, uh, wow, words, that grows river. It feels like here. What? It, it feel, is it, okay. is how it's pulling? It feels now like a distinct tug towards the towards the fountain at this point almost like a magnetic pull yeah it's trying to get back in there do you think maybe it's alive or full of parasites like the gray brook in the shadow i mean water shouldn't be flowing into things like up a, the side of something or trying to pull. So this isn't natural water. Yeah. Well, I mean, we saw something like that in the underground temple. Mm -hmm. But that was a temple to a goddess of water, so that kind of fits. Um, Do you think the orcs might have drank this water and that's how they became infected? I don't also, know. Closer to the water a little bit, but not too, too close. What sort of search? What? What sort no, of search? I just said I'll step closer to the water just to get a better look at it. Okay. Make a perception check. Wrong window. Just a... It doesn't seem to be moving all that much or flowing. Someone else pointed out that it was flowing upward into the fountain, but you can't quite see it. It doesn't have a lot of distinctive features on its own. The only thing that you can kind of notice is where the edge, where people have stepped, those footprints do seem to be moving back into the pool, almost like it's trying okay. to maintain itself. So if you move the vial up further away, like if we go towards like a corner of the room, do you think the pool is going to get harder? That's what she did. Okay. So, I will. Oh, I see it now. Okay. Well, the water's not attacking us yet. And if it means that they might have actually gone this way, then sure, we should check out the doors and head on, I guess. I am going to keep this vial on me so that we can find our way back here. Yeah, good plan. Clark would like to do a thing. Okay. Excellent. Uh, first thing what is sort of to thing? draw the stacks and see how the water reacts to it because it does radiant damage. Number two, okay. after that's done, he'll try the, the glaive and see if it has uh, any effect as well. All right, so you're going to attack it with the, the full radiant effect, I guess. essentially? I was going to place it there, hoping for the best, but if I have to attack, I'll do that. Those effects only happen when you do, actually. It's sort of like you have to command the weapon to make the extra okay. damage, so you basically have to make an attack. Uh, I won't make you roll because well, it's hard to miss. But as you drag the sacks through there and it gives off those little shimmering puffs of radiant power, um, you do see the water sort of divide around it. Doesn't seem to harm it in any particular way, but it does seem to avoid it. When you pull out the the uh, glaive, 
Um, it's actually the opposite. They seem to move right. towards it. The thing that's in my vial also react to it? From that distance, it's hard to tell, but uh, it, it, it could. If you were able to bring the weapons closer or do something like that, maybe you'd be able to tell more. But uh, it does seem to slosh a little bit, but the water itself isn't moving that much. Clark will look up at the smart people and say, that's a thing. I don't know what it means. So were we watching Clark touch the water with like various like radiant damage weapons and The other one does necrotic, I think. Yeah. Yep. So and it likes the necrotic. Yeah, so it, it seemed to have avoided the, the radiant damage, but it seemed to have uh, moved towards the necrotic weapon. That doesn't seem good. No. I feel like we shouldn't touch this at all. Can I make an arcana check on it or sure. Right, that's fortunate. Really? Oh. Uh, as you look at it, you're distracted somewhat as the edge of your boot seems to be sitting in the water itself. You didn't realize that you'd moved that close to it. Uh, and you can see the end, end of the boot looking slightly I'll uh, move backwards with haste. <laughs> Shake it off my foot. Okay, a couple of droplets go flying through the air and then we join the others. The water doesn't seem to move at all, otherwise. Clark, sure. make a perception check. There you go. Well, there you go. As you step backwards and, and watch as Zacchaeus takes a couple of quick steps, you look down at your own boots where you've been stepping in the water. And you can see now along the edge of those boots, there's pitting and scarring. Where, uh, what kind uh, of boots are you wearing? Not much, I wouldn't imagine. Just whatever normal people have. Simple, yeah. simple leather boots. Yeah, there's pitting and scarring along the leather. And you can see the seams are starting to get uh, dragged out a little bit. Almost as though it was eating right. away at the boots. Uh, Clark will point at Emeryn and then point at his feet and say, check that out. Yeah, same for mine. Well, I'm assuming the damage to mine are, isn't as bad as Clark's, or is it? Not quite as bad, because you only just had a toe in there. Does it look like it? Emeryn can what? make an Arcana roll. Um, Rune can make an arcana roll. That was fairly quick, right? That was fairly Sorry? quick, right? I mean, uh, Clark had been stomping through the water a little more than most of you. Most of you stepped out it pretty quickly, but when he was dragging his weapons through, he would have been in Fair longer. Enough. Somebody knows how to roll arcana. <laughs> <laughs> So looking around the room at the way the bodies are placed and the way that it, your feet or your boots are reacting to this, um, it's, mm -hmm. it's not water. It's, it's actually acting a little bit more akin to a very mild digestive acid, which is probably explains why all the bodies are devoid of flesh and the clothes are in tatters. Yeah, I think that's the thing what's trying to eat us. It's just doing it really slowly. Let's pick a door. <laughs> yes, let, let's try to avoid this water from now on. Uh, can anybody hear anything? I mean, I'm near a door. Can I hear anything Take from it. there? Um, yeah, I need to figure out something for how... With Fog of War on, I can't <laughs> actually see the room. 
<laughs> so okay, you can set the fog of war to not be there for you. And I will have to see if I can find that option. Da -da 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 -da. Pretty sure you can. Ah, there we go. Well. I figured it out. So you listen at the door. Uh, make a perception check. Reaches for dice. Mm -hmm. Oh, and there's all those extra tokens I thought I couldn't find. Fourteen. Not my best hour. I don't want. Um, the doors are fairly thick. You don't seem to detect anything behind it. So you hear nothing. Sorry, yawning. <laughs> um. Yeah. And there's nothing on the door that I can see. It doesn't seem to be marked yeah. especially. What about the door frame on any of them? They look pretty straightforward, pretty simple. I'm glad to check the other door. Hmm. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, what was <laughs> Didn't that? Sleep last night. Um, Clark, do you want to check the other door? Does any one of you want to supply me a skull or a stone or something? I toss him a skull. There's skulls all around us. It's true. Oh, yeah. Okay, Clark, will use, Clark will use a skull to block the door so it doesn't close on us again. Cool. Okay. You prop the, the, uh, the skull in. The door grinds against it almost uh, unnaturally strong. Seems to be holding for the time being. Clark will make his way to the opposite door. Okay. Easily done. Again, nondescript door. Doesn't seem anything fancy about it. Does the wood seem as well preserved as the one we came in? It looks a little tattered in places. Looks like the door probably swelled a little bit, so it's a little tight in its frame, but otherwise, it's okay. okay. All right, well, shall we? Which door? Mini, mini, money, mo. Whichever one's unlocked. I try this one. I try this. Doesn't appear to be locked. Doesn't appear to be locked either. Let's split up and check both sides. That I've read several sense. books at the library, just fictional stories, and whenever there, there's scary stories, like whenever people split up, they all get killed. So I think we should all stick together. But somebody open a door. <laughs> it would be a shame, too, if we opened up one of the doors and they were happened to be just beyond on the other one. Yeah. All right, so let's go left. Cool. So, is there, yep. you open up that door. It reveals a hallway. Far down the hallway, you can make out a little bit of light. Coming from some sconce on the wall. That one. I'm not sure. You can see another sconce near you, which is also unlit. Opposite it is another wooden door. <gasps> In the far end of the hallway, you can just barely make out another doorway and another hallway branching off to the right another one to the left um. well we might as well just go and check all the doors yeah. one at a time preferably yeah 
Okay, there's a door right here across from the unlit. Um, oh, I got to use the right tool. Across from the unlit uh, light. There. Mm. Be careful, it might be trapped. Emeryn tries to open the door. <laughs> it practically falls off its hinge. This one does not seem like it's been keeping well. And reveals a short hallway behind it. Anything? Ending at another door. It's a hallway and then another door. Do we want to check this one further or go to one of the other doors? I mean, we might as well check one and then check the other, right? Okay. I'll go forward and push on the next door with my shield. I'm tempted to say it's a pain. It'd be funny. <laughs> the door doesn't open because you're leaning against it too heavily. Right, I need to just do something real quick. Dude, that's cool. Uh, so, what's that? a stream of light from where I'm standing. Can yeah. you the other room from where I'm standing? Yep, there's a little crack that. Uh... That's yep. cool. All right. Okay. Uh, you open up that door. It opens up into a storeroom. Well, what looks like a storeroom. Several barrels to the left of you. Large barrel just to the right. The large barrel to the right seems to be leaking. Several crates line the back of the room. And directly in front of you, you see a hulking creature, much similar to ones you had faced the other night. For the first time in this particular session, in this particular mechanism, roll initiative. Woo. Woo. Now I got to figure out how to initiate yeah. things. When I when I hit initiative <laughs> from the play or from the character sheet, it said you wanted to send the result of this roll to the turn tracker, but no valid token was selected. Okay, so you didn't have your token. Maybe at the time. no. Try to see if I could drag my guy into the turn order, but yeah, I might be able to. I can't see the new room though, or at least it's not lit. You have to oh, move yeah. into the room to see it. It's a. I figured I could see it down the um, hall. Yeah, I, I've been playing around with the dynamic lighting in this stuff, and apparently that was not the dynamic lighting I had hoped to put <laughs> put it to. Uh, let's see. Okay. I can... Okay. Now. Yeah, there room. now. So. I don't know, but that wasn't my initiative roll, so I think I can modify it. There we go. Yeah, I've got two of you for some reason. I actually actively uh, went into my character see. sheet. Okay. Sorry, I'm still figuring out some of this stuff. Well, that didn't work. Red? Ah, there we go. Yes, red. So. As you see before you standing, a hulking red figure. Where is... I wish this part were smoother, but I really don't know how this part is supposed to work when we don't have... I might just do it manually. Let me just do it manually for now. It's just as easy. Well, there I got a... Was it nine? nine. Okay. I'm ruined. You got 19. I, mean, uh, Zach I, is I what could use the 15 plus 2 of the second roll, but the first roll was a, was a total of 9. Yeah, the first one I got was a 12, actually. Can I... Ah. 
Yeah. There we go. I'm going to get rid of that turn tracker. Just do it manually for now. Uh, okay, so let's let me call them out then, and we can get them uh, that way. So from El Zero, what was your initiative? Nine. Nine. Twelve. Okay. Amrun. Twenty. Okay. Zakis. Nineteen plus one. Clark. Okay. Clark. Okay. Let me roll his initiative. Too many. Too many cooks. All right. So it looks like it is Zakis up front. Um, Rune will be next. Right. Uh, well, I will. So I'm way. I can't. I can't see like the map lit up on the screen, but I. I, I can. I can see the red guy, if I'm way down the hallway and he's in the middle, right? Uh, okay. Uh, yes. So there's going to be a firebolt hiding his way. Emron ducks. Okay. As soon as I can find my thing. It's 22 to hit. Okay. What kind yep. of damage is it? Fire? Okay. You see the firebolt uh, strike. In fact, uh, Amrun notices it in particular that it does not seem to have the same effect. It would Viral damage, though? Or? Seems to... Uh, uh, I, oh, crap. I, it said I rolled one d10, but I was supposed to roll three. Um, oh, okay. So roll two d10 more then. So twenty-three total. Okay. Uh, it seemed to skitter across the tough red scales on this creature. Okay. It stands slightly taller than. Uh, Actually, not quite as tall as uh, as Zacchus. It's a little bit hunched over. It's got a very frog-like appearance, kind of like mm -hmm. what you had seen before. It seems to be unclothed except for scant uh, bits of, of cloth that seem to be clinging to it. That is very long, wicked-looking uh, claws and very nasty, wide mouth with teeth that you've seen very recently biting very painfully. And does a fire seem to have caused any damage at all, or...? It does seem okay. to have caused some damage, but right. not as much as you expected. You know the force of your spell, and it did not seem yeah. to have that effect. It felt like a pretty good cast this time, too, damn it. <laughs> Alright, and I'm staying behind everybody else at the end of the hallway. Oh, hey. Let me see if I can do this. Oh, wrong uh, button. Ah, there we go. I can remove doors. Cool. Or at least visible doors. So you should be able to see into that room now. Nice. Yep. Hopefully. All right. Uh, next is Cameron will uh, move forward and uh, yeah, if these look like the things that we had fought before, but kind of like fully developed. He'll try casting a lesser uh, restoration first. Uh, he'll make, uh, let's see, spell attack roll. Yeah, kind of this is for a spiritual weapon, but 21 to touch the target. Okay, you do manage to lay a finger on its skin. And eye. cast Lesser Restoration. You feel the energy flow out from you, the blue aura surrounding it for a second. It it writhes backward and kind of shouts into the sky, this this strange, hissing, high-pitched high wail, and nothing else happens. Okay. Um... Yes, well, that's pretty much all I can do. 
Okay, you can move. Yeah, no, I, I'm i intending to stay here to keep it from getting to the rest of them. If I can. Okay. Uh, it is now Clark's turn. Ah. Well, I guess Clark will have to move into the room. Okay, it's a little crowded because it is on a narrow hallway. And if he's going to move around everybody else. Missed right. that last part. Big scary creature, huh? Yes. Okay. Uh, let's try this then. Mm. I strike it. Please ignore the at, with the, side of the room. blade thingy as best I can. Well, you can't stand there because that's exactly where uh, Amrun is. So, to the left and right of you, there are broken crates and old barrels. It would become oh, considered sorry. difficult terrain. Okay. So what if I'm directly in front of the thing? Sorry, what, sir? Uh, there we go. That was lame. So that's where that's where you and Amrun are standing at the moment. It's standing right there. Does that work for There's you? There's a bit of pile, a coil of, of, of old rope right there. So you'd have to move either to the side or move up towards it. Ignore the orc. How's that? That works. Okay. So using the glaive? Uh, yeah, I'm going to try to hit it again too. Okay. Yeah, the 11 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, again. <laughs> there we go. Uh, 18 does hit. Sweet. You swing the glaive down. It extends its shadowy blade and cuts into it. Uh, and what kind of damage is it? It is uh, slashy damage, um, and it also be necro okay. damage. Okay. Um, this bit. And so, okay. Uh, twelve plus uh, four necrotic. All right. As the blade comes slashing downward through it, the blade almost seems to pass through it, but that's mostly the fact of the extra shadow which is clinging around at this point. It uh, howls in pain as large gashes appear across it, and then there's a little surge across the wounds as the necrotic energy bursts out towards it. Uh, it looks very wounded from that. that uh, that's your action and your move. Anything else? Exactly. We'll cheer Clark on. Right. <laughs> well, it's Elzera's so, turn. Uh, I'm going to pull out my longbow. And shoot. Okay. So an 18 hits, right? Yeah. 18 okay, does hit, so yes. One. As the arrow flies right over uh, Amrun's <laughs> ear and lodges securely in the side of the I didn't need that sideburn. <laughs> 
<laughs> and that's seven, seven plus three, so uh, ten damage of the magical piercing variety. And I all right. Oh. It's now gonna. Uh, sorry, uh, I'm ahead. gonna tell my shield to go up. Ah, the shield hops up, kind of bouncing off the walls in this uh, somewhat narrow hallway. You get the impression that everything in here was kind of built to dwarven yeah. scale. It's all a little more narrow than you're actually yeah. used to. There's also no no light directly in here as well. Actually, sorry, there's a there's a, a faint green glow coming from the floor around where this red creature is standing. Probably from the grain, which is overgrown. Fair enough. Uh, and that is your move and bonus, or your action and yep, bonus? I'm going to... Stay where I am because I know Zacchaeus probably won't go in. That is a assumption. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, and you're going to say something, sorry? Uh, well, now just it, it's got an arrow that's, that's sort of stuck into its uh, cheek uh, and sort of hanging there weirdly. Uh, it seems slightly unaffected, uh, not not unaffected by it, but slightly uh, ignoring the wound. And actually, as you watch Amrun very close up, the wound seals over, and the arrow falls clattering to the ground. Uh, as it, let's see, uh, it's going to turn towards Amrun because of this strange spell that it seemed to be angry with, but not mm -hmm. actually affected by and we'll launch sure. towards you uh, first lunging towards you with a bite uh, let's see i'm nope. assuming a 10 does not hit wow that's terrible uh as you kind of leap back a little shield. bit out of its range uh, <laughs> oh, then uh, or yeah you get that that shield kind of bounces its nose up against it and kind of Yelps and jumps back a little bit and leaps forward once again, this time with two claw attacks. Swings to the, from the left hand, 15. And from the right hand, wow, okay. Uh, managing not to connect. Kind of scraping across your shield angrily. Uh, it's going to try to... Uh, is hiding let's see it's trying to get out of here so it's going to try to move uh it's going to move first to get away but clark you do have an opportunity attack uh, let's see here and while you've seen this creatures before i don't think you'd faced any that were red before uh 10 misses unfortunately as it kind of leaps out of your way uh, moving towards the hallway, yeah, now trying to push past Elza. Did I miss my? Oh, right. Never mind. No, you're the you're the beginning. Yep. Uh, it is trying to shove its way through. Uh, let's see. That's a contested uh, athletics or acrobatics, depending which one you wanted. Oof. Okay. And room, can you block it? Beat that. Nope. Right now, it's currently between Amrun and Elzera, as Elzera is effectively keeping it at bay, uh, filling up the hallway with herself. Make all 110 pounds That's, of me be massive. The, get the big bow, and it's it's trying to avoid you. Uh, back around to the top, it is Zakis. You can now see that it's tucked in between Elzera and uh, Amrun. You can see it more clearly from here now. Uh, angry and desperate and animal-like. All right. Well, it's going to take a magic missile at level four. Let's see if I can manage to roll this properly. All right. So that's six D4 plus six, yes? Mm-hmm. Uh, whatever magic missile is, I don't have it in front of me here, so. Yep, for level four. Oh, that's, that's, it's a mixed roll. Yeah. Yeah, it kind of two best, two worst, you know, and the one in between. Still, quite a bit of damage. 
uh, as the missiles kind of spiral around uh, Elzera. And why can't I grab him? I also didn't want to hit my allies. <laughs> Mm -hmm. That is a valid point. It's a bit of a cluster in there right now. There we go. As the... Uh, oh, man, I keep typing in the wrong windows. Do -do. Uh, as the missiles swarm around Elzera in those small spaces, she's kind of leaving that the creature couldn't find its way to get through. And... Thwom, 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 thwom. They all hit and uh, impact with it. You can see in front of you, Elzera, and now uh, as well... Uh, Amrun, as you see behind it, small holes forming in its skin that tears, rips open, uh, and, but the skin seems to be slightly sealing itself. Uh, that's your action. Are you going to bonus or move? I'll move Lacus. out of the way. I'm assuming this door is still closed. Not the one I'm... Which door? Yeah, this one. Yes, that's a little... No, that's open again. You guys opened it on your way through. It seems to be coming in my direction, so I don't want to be staying there. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. So you pull back to there. Okay. That's it. Uh, Amrun. Much like the others, this one seems to be trying to get away from me rather than attack. Hmm. Yeah. Not sure what to do. Um, for now, I'm going to cast Sanctuary. I don't know. It's like she attacks that would end. Um, I'm going to cast Bless on uh, Elzera Clark and I. Okay. Blue tendrils of energy switch off in each direction. Yep. They give us a d4 bonus on uh, on stuff so uh yeah other than that uh yeah i don't move or anything so okay the energy settles in and all of and all three of you feel the blessings of paluxia yeah, plus a, upon you. plus a D4 to attack of... and save. Yep. yep. That is concentration. For up to one right? minute. Okay. Let's just put a little marker on you for concentration. Let's do... Uh, that means it's it's uh, Clark's turn. Yeah. It ran away from you. Apparently How dare. Didn't like you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Clark would like to... Jump onto this barrel over here. Okay. And stab uh, it. Make thing. an athletics check. Sure. Really I wait to the roll. Mm -hmm. No, that's fine. Also, roll 20 has been a little bit slow in recent uh, weeks. Yuck. There we go. Ooh. Uh, as you nimbly hop up on top of the barrel and realize the barrel itself is not all that structurally sound, it begins to shake and roll. You will make your attacks with its advantage as you are oh, somewhat okay. off balance. It's just there snarling and looking around, trying to figure out which of you is the best doorway outward. Clark leaps up on this barrel, but ugh, kind of balancing a little bit. It's shaking. He swings down with his glaive and... Lag. <laughs> I was hoping Loading. to fill in the lag, but it didn't work. <laughs> There's only so much film I can do. Hey, uh, there it is. Whew. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, so the 20 hits. Okay. Uh, assuming the 20 hits as well. Well, it's disadvantage, right? So the oh, those two rolls. The 20 then. How's that sound? So the glaive comes solidly down. Oops. I think you meant slash roll. Probably. Uh, <laughs> no worries. We're all getting used to it. Can I roll multiple dice in one go? So if you go into the side, there's a dice roller, like the, the one up on top of the question mark. Okay. If you go into the advanced dice roller. Yeah, the advanced one. There we go. So uh, 11 normal slashing magic damage and five necrotic. All right. As these large gashes appear across its uh, shoulders where the blade has passed through like a whisper, uh, it howls in pain. That's the first attack. I'm just getting the other one here set. And rolled again. Yep. Fourteen good or no? Fourteen. Oh, whoops, wrong window. Da, 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 da. Fourteen just hits. Okay. As you kind of crisscross the wound and you barely pierce the skin, but it does hit. So seven slashy and four necrotic. All right. Once again, kind of opening up this this crisscross of a wound, the blood starts to flow outward, but you can even see visibly in front of you as parts of the wound seem to be sealing themselves up. That is a move and a in action. No bonus. Uh, no. Okay. Elzera, Hello. this thing is right in front of you. So how did it act towards the uh, necrotic damage that it just got? It didn't seem to act unusually towards any of the damage. It just doesn't like being hurt. I, I, I mean, it, it didn't like damage, seem to damage less than it should. No. Okay. Um, so I'm going to cast Blight. Ooh. Okay. I haven't pulled this one out in a while. Um, a constitution saving throw against 17. All right. Okay. As it kind of uh, rigidly uh, holds on to itself and grimaces under the strike, it does save. Mm -hmm. Or uh, 88 uh, on a failed or half on a successful one. Probably the other way around. It's probably taking half damage on a successful one. That's what I said. One. Wait, that's what, that's what you just said. Never mind. <laughs> My brain's just not hearing things. Uh, not 8d20, 8d8. There we go. 8d20, wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> well, that's a pretty good call. Oh. If you guys could do 8d20 damage, just imagine I'm sending after you. Because, <laughs> man, that's a lot. Oh, that's halved, so. Yeah. All right, so 43 halved. Wow, okay. Nice. Still quite a bit. Yep. Uh, as you uh, see the the green uh, shimmer. Uh, looking almost like uh, vines which are growing just beneath the skin, puffing it up and uh, tearing through small thorns piercing out of its hide. Uh, it, it yowls in pain, this high-pitched scream of madness uh, as all over its body little eruptions start happening. 
and the skin starts to sag in around where the receding veins of vines had been. And it does not look happy about this. Not that you expected it to look happy, but... No. Uh, what else can I do? Um, I mean, that's a lot, so, you know, don't feel bad. Uh, still. Um... No, I'll save my wild sheep for later. Okay. Are you going to move? I'm going to hold this door. Okay. Hold the door. Approach <laughs> door. Uh, these are both inward towards the room. Okay. So he's so like have... in front of the door, so I can't. Yeah, he's that. basically blocking the door from shutting at the moment. Okay. Cool. Uh, actually, I just attacked him. Mm -hmm. So he can attack me. Uh, I'm going to move here and close this door. Okay. He can attack you. No, because I attacked him. Mobility. Oh, because of the mobility. Yep. Yeah, he kind of uh, leans in your direction, but you move backward. All right. And you close that door? And I close that door. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. What would it like to do? Hmm. It's not like being there. It is its turn. Let's see. So I, I, and I'm trying to like hold it. Hmm. With my, you know, 10 strength. It's going to, yeah, it's going to try to barrel towards that door, but it's doing so cagely. So te technically it's disengaging. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's its action. Uh, and it's just going to keep moving right straight, straight through the door. So it's going to barrel into the door. So that'll be an athletics versus you can use acrobatics or athletics to defend. Does she get advantage because she's got a door across it? Uh, not advantage, but it's, it, it makes it. Yeah, sure. Why not? You get advantage because there's a door. Doors give cool. advantage. That's what they're for, right? <laughs> Doesn't matter anyway. He kind of slams into the door. The door gives a bit of a creak and kind of collapses because it was pretty flimsy to begin with. But you do manage to hold it there. So there's no door anymore. But, uh, oh, and you do see close up as some of its wounds seem to close over. But it's still closer to the people who can hit. <laughs> My point is stalling. You need to there. Sometimes it feels like I'm driving against the wind here. All right, there we go. Uh, top of the round. Zacchus. The door in front of you splinters. Uh oh. It doesn't break completely, right? Uh no, not the door behind you. That one did break completely. But barreling through, if I can get the scroll to move for me. Uh, as you see a creature, a blue creature, uh, charge towards you, leap over the water, and land right in front of you. It looks like a, a similar version of these large blue creatures, but in fact, uh, it stands taller than the other one does. <sighs> that ain't good. Uh, as you get the sort of sense that, oh, it's been crying out for help this entire time. That help has arrived. Uh, I could roll. Well, uh, is so, it my turn to go, or is it its turn? It's its turn, actually. Uh, as it leaps forward to you, and oh, actually, you don't have very fancy attacks, but it will attack first by kind of as it leaps forward, it opens up its its mighty maw. Uh, you you kind of notice these sickly rows of teeth inside, intended to grasp and collapse, and you can even see, as you get a close-up view of it, uh, at the tips of some of the teeth, which are hollow, there's tiny little movement, a little bit of a black, wriggling shape. Gross. You might want to scroll to the right on the map. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I have two maps. There we go. Sure. And I'll move my viewpoint character over there, too. I will figure this out eventually, so I don't have to have a viewpoint character. Anyway. 
uh, as it takes a bite towards you. Twenty-five. Yeah, yeah to beat an eleven, so that it's. Okay. You take thirteen points of piercing damage as the bite uh, reaches forward and kind of clamps down on your arm. You can feel your arm kind of crushed under the weight. Uh, then it will. Claw, left hand claw, fourteen to hit. Yeah, that's it. Twelve points of slashing damage. Make a Constitution saving throw. Oh fuck yeah! Run for those. As you feel the claw scrape along your arm, uh, you're leaving a, a nasty streak behind. Uh, you kind of will yourself not to accept its terrible bargain, and you are not infected for the moment. But then it was with the right hand strike. And 18 hits. Yeah. For 14 points of slashing damage. And another. Constitution saving throw. Just let me do math first. You said 14 damage? Yes. You feel this time thrown off by the other strike and still holding on to that consciousness of yourself barely feel the resistance kick in as the magical energy from the fingers scrapes along your sides but you yeah. remain uninfected that was close now it's your turn well it's panic mode now so uh, it has to beat a DC of 19 to do what disintegrated <laughs> okay. Is that a ranged spell? Oh, never mind. It's a save anyway. Yeah. Okay. And it's like really big and really tall, so it's pretty hard to miss, and my hand is right there. Nope, that's okay. Uh, I think it, it's a ranged spell, not a touch spell, right? Uh, yeah, I believe so, yeah. Okay. And what's the save? Uh, DC 19. Of what? Of dexterity, I think. Yeah, disintegrate be dex save. Yes, Okay. Was a three? <laughs> <laughs> then it takes not a success. Three damage. <laughs> Woo. As you see before it, it uh, come on you. Uh, it. Why is that not selected? Oh, it might be lagging here a little bit. Uh, as the, the wound settles in and kind of uh, the front part of it, the skin starts to rip away from its internal organs. You can see now kind of its internals working. They do not look like the internal organs of, an, of a normal creature. They are a swarming mass of interconnected small uh, worms and twisted beings. And eventually I'll be able to update. Oh, I'm on the wrong layer. Never mind. Select. There we go. But it is not dead. Damn it. Uh, and what kind of damage is that? Uh, I believe it's force. Just let me double check. I just had the page open. Don't think that's going to make a difference. Yeah, force. In this case. Oh, actually, wait a minute. Da -da -da. It has advantage. Six. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> advantage didn't seem to make much difference to it. As you see it rocked by this and uh, writhing in pain, and you can see the beady little eyes in its massive uh, forehead 
are now looking uh, kind of intently at you, as if now the only thing it can think of is revenge. Okay, so as a bonus action, uh, I have a bonus action, right? Yeah. Just let me make sure. Yeah, I will cast Fire Step. <laughs> uh, what level of spell is Fire Step? Fire Step? At level five. Yeah, so you can't cast two leveled spells in the same round. Really? You cast a leveled spell and a cantrip in the same round. Okay, because it says I can use it as a reaction. I think it's in Xanathar's just sick. Well, if it's a reaction, it's not a bonus action. Ah, let me check. As soon as I can find my book. What's the spell? No, uh, far step. Far step, yeah, I think you cast it as a bonus action and it's a series of uh, bonus action movements. Yeah, it's a fifth level spell. But it's still uh, a fifth level spell. Yeah. And you can't cast two level spells in the same round. If it was a reaction, he could uh, he could be reacting to something, but I think it's a bonus action. Which it's a bonus cool. action. It's a bonus action. Okay, because I could have swore I've done it before, or maybe it was a cantrip. Anyway. Uh, yeah, well, well, once you did, yeah, once you you did it, it last session, but the bonus actions to to, uh, to teleport afterwards don't count as casting a spell. Okay, right. Uh, the initial casting counts as casting a spell. After that, you can use bonus actions to keep, keep far stepping. Okay. So that wouldn't work, but you do still have your bonus action. If there's something else you'd like to try. There's nothing else you can use for bonus actions, I don't think. Most of the time, not. Um, it's these special cases, so I keep asking. Uh, you can move, however, if you want to try to move away, but you do know that it is bearing down on you. Well, yeah, let's run away. Okay. It will take a swing at you as you move away. Uh, but with my luck, not doing so well. Let's see how we do. My AC is pretty shitty. 19. Yeah, that's it. So it does uh, does scrape you along the arm as you move away. 10 points of slashing damage. And make a constitution saving throw. Also, if you're going to be moving there, you will be attacked by the red one as you pass by it. I thought the door was still there. Nope, the door, nope, the door disintegrated when it ran into it. It just hasn't been able to move any further. Oh, okay. Can I move, like, closer to Alzara? Yeah. I mean, like, it's under literally when you leave when you leave its, uh, its range. Uh, oh, natural 20. Nice. Yeah, once again, now kind of used to the burn of its tr attempted infections, uh, you you push yourself uh, to be whole and solid and reject its in, its influence. Yeah. So could I move here too without getting? Yep. Like here. Yep. As long as you move away from its uh, threat zone. Gotcha. Eventually. Uh, I'm ruining you're up. Hmm. Okay. Well, I am going to sacred flame it. All right. That is a dex save, I believe. Uh, yep. DC seventeen. Does not save. It takes 10 radiant damage. Ooh. Does not look happy about that. Then again, it's really hard to say if these things ever look happy. You kind of get the impression that their entire life is misery. But nonetheless, a blue flame curls up around it, digging into those still exposed wounds. And then uh, I am going to cast Spiritual Weapon, which we don't have a token for. We'll have to get one. Uh, you can just draw sh draw shape. Yeah, that would work. That's a twenty four to hit. Uh, 
That's your spiritual weapon, right? Yep. Twenty forty hit definitely hits. Uh, there we go. Five force damage. Shoot, I meant to cast that at a higher level. I forgot to say it. Oh. Hmm. Wait. No. Um, are they both leveled spells? What's that? This spiritual weapon and uh, no, the other nope. ones a cantrip. The other ones a cantrip. No, actually, I can't cast spiritual weapon. Never mind, because uh, uh, that would get rid of the concentration spell that I'm currently using. Oh, okay. Uh, oh yeah, what does bless? Uh, bonus D four to attack and save. Anyway. Yes. Cool. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure Clark is going to want to run in after it, so I'm just going to stay back here. That's it okay. for me. Well, Clark, what do you like to do? Damn. You're still in this unstable barrel, so. Oh, do we have a Clark? Looks like we might have a, a Clark, frozen Clark. Oh, no. Yeah, he just messaged, sorry, my call gets dropped occasionally. Yeah. I'm sure I saw that in one of the 17 windows I have open, <laughs> but I'm, I'm afraid I Fair enough. That so why I'm here. <laughs> well, uh, we can wait a moment for Clark to reconnect. Loading. We're starting to get a little bit more momentum here, trying to understand how how roll 20 works. I'm trying to get used to my three windows and 10 or 17 windows and three screens, two mice, two keyboards, and a partridge and a pear tree, or a pair of partridges and a, and a fig tree. Maybe. I just set up my base stats, nothing else, in the longbow, just because that's what I'm using right now. Sure. In the character sheet, just because I wanted to see if I pressed initiative, it would go on the tracker, which it does, so. Yeah, I'm sure the, uh, oh, I just realized I got to move the the viewpoint character. That's another weird thing that I probably shouldn't have to do. No. I think that's just because I happen to be, uh, so on, on the screens being delivered to you folks at home, that is actually me as a player logging in so that you don't get the whole map, so that me as a GM has the whole map in front of me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I don't know of a better way to split those in the moment, but I didn't think about the idea that th there should be a way to let the entire map that you guys have seen already be exposed. I, I haven't figured that out yet. I think in order to do that, you would have to take away the lighting because the lighting basically just shadows everything we can't directly see so that we can't see what's going on. Um, you also, actually, I think there's a setting for uh, under sites. Uh, for the individual tokens, I think it's I think there's one for everyone has sight. Uh, you might be able to switch it to that and show what every what all of us can see. Yeah, that one, I did one setting that didn't work. Uh, let's see here. If you put uh, your vision token where I currently am, you can see in both rooms. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't want to obscure your token because I know where I am. Oh. Here, put, put yours first. <laughs> I know where, I'll, I know. I'll put mine on top. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, boom. I see a lot more now. I have returned. Hey, hey. how's it going? There we go. Clark has loaded. It is a it is a it is Clark's turn. So he can uh so he can uh, cleave things in twain. Yes, I had done two strikes and I think I hit one. Oh, did they show up in the log? I don't see that. Uh, they didn't show up in our log. They're just after you, your spiritual weapon hammer. Oh, there they go. They just popped up. 
So, uh, so you moved off the law, off the barrel, hop down, and then went for a strike. Yep. Yep. So, sixteen hits and ten misses. Nine plus six necro. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I gotta remember the D four. I keep forgetting to mention it. Yeah, me too. Oh yeah, it'd be a twelve, but still didn't hit. Uh, yes, uh, you strike twice. <laughs> at this time, crisscrossing its back with these nasty necrotic wounds. Anything else? No, I think that's it. All right, Elzera. So hidden by the viewpoint. I put up a second bar. And I'm going to do this this way. And become a fire elemental, which is large, but I can fit into small spaces. Mm. All right. Yeah, I'll have to get some elemental tokens as well. Yep. Uh, I'll do there. No, that's not what I wanted to do. Oh, well. I can fit into small spaces, so I'm, I'm fine. Um, and, a little bit, and that's okay. <laughs> uh, so I'm, uh, I'm in the square to my right as well. So, but I can fit into a space up to one inch. So, uh, and All right. I'm going to hit this Whoosh, guy. Fire. Whoosh. Um, well, I'd rather be you... next to fire than next to that fucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> around so oh, 20 plus six to hit what's that 12 uh, unfortunately in its kg nature it is missed oh wait my d4 15 hey uh, just hits cool the blessing guides your hand at the last moment <laughs> and you slam into it uh so that is 2d6 plus 3 magical fire the 9 and as you see your 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 fist of fire slam into it you see the fire spreading over its reddish skin with less effect than you expected cool uh, i will hit it again then i expected that <laughs> uh, i mean you could let up on it and just sort of like hey buddy can we talk and it goes. I mean, that's not a great conversation. That's fair. I mean, technically, right now you're sounding like. Twelve. You know, crackle, crackle, and then it goes crackle, crackle. So twenty-five. Twenty-five hits. Um, and this time, the six. nasty uppercut. Plus three. Fourteen. Ooh. As the nasty flames curl over it, again, its skin seems unaffected. It seems to cauterize some of the wounds almost, but it is wounded more. Uh, and it is magical fire, not just fire. That's fine. Yeah. Cool. Uh, let's see. It's turn. Uh, yeah. Oh, wait. Are you going to move or do anything else? Mm. Yeah, I'm kind of in the middle right now, so I'll stay where I am. Okay. Hopefully a wall of fire in front of it kind of stops it. Also, it's on fire. I think. Yes. Uh, is it like creatures on fire or is it just like flammable things on fire? A creature that uh, that touches the elemental or is hit with a melee attack while, uh, within or hits it with a melee attack uh, takes yeah, it's lit on fire. It takes damage or it's lit on fire? Or both? Uh, Sorry, haven't used this one in a while. Move through space, a creature that touches the elemental or hits it with a melee attack. I've touched it. Um, takes five, uh, 1d10 fire damage. In addition, uh, the elemental can enter hostile creature space. Until someone takes an action to douse the fire, the creature takes 1d10 fire damage at the start of each of its turns. Okay. 
Uh, well, first of all, it, uh, it seals some of its wounds, hopefully enough. Uh, I'm going to find just, uh, let's make it, uh, it's, it's yellow, it's on fire. Cool. Uh, there you go. Uh, and it takes a D10. Go ahead and roll a D10 for me. Mm, one. Okay. Yeah. Well, no, no real effect to the fire damage at the moment. Uh, let's see. Uh, it is going to step. Hmm. Yeah, it's going to try to sidestep around you. But that does mean Clark gets an opportunity attack. As it tries to slip around the corner. So I'm just to remember, I'm in these four. Yeah, it has to move through you. Actually, no, it doesn't. Uh, well, yeah, no, it kind of does. Hello? So, yep, Sorry, it has to move through you. Well. Sorry, uh, Clark, it tried to run oh. away from you. So you do get a chance to attack it. Did you freeze again? Looks like you did. Oh no. We're making do with all kinds of forms of domestic internet today, folks, so please <laughs> bear with us. Uh, I think two of us, well, technically three of us have uh, fiber op. Uh, I don't know if you have fiber op next, but. Oh, yeah. there he's returned. Jody. Jody. Nope, he's gone. He's gone. <laughs> <laughs> um, do we want to take our break now? It's seven thirty. I think after this fight, we'll be done for the night. Also, that's my light radius. Okay. All right. I see some attacks rolled. I see a twenty-four or twenty-three, which hits. Uh, and oh, he must have. Oh, 27 to hit. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and then doing... 16 damage. 16 damage. Woo, nasty. Good. As he carves into it. Now, it was already on fire. Uh, but we'll continue to move. Let's see. Uh, 10. As it tries to get away. Uh... And leaps into the water. Effectively using its action to douse the flames. But that's it for it. Cool. I sense a lightning bolt coming up. <laughs> mm, well, the blue one still has to act. Uh, let's see, what is it going to do? Hmm. It's not going to charge the fire. Actually, after what it's faced, it's going to get the hell out of there. So let's see. That's there. And we'll continue to travel along there. Zakis, it is your turn. Do I still see the blue guy? What is your... Uh, your range of dark sight or dark vision. I think it's 60 feet. 60 feet. Also, I'm emitting bright light until just past the red guy. Uh, yep. But it's all dark after that. So it's. There's no illumination after that. Well, that's bright light until there and then dim light. Yeah, but it's 60 feet from where he's standing, is where you can see. No matter what's illuminated in the meantime. And I think that's just a little bit further than 60 feet. I'm trying to get the map here. So, because it's bright light until there. Yep. But the illumination is not counted from where he, you are. He can see anything within that range. Yeah. But I think he was trying to see the other guy, which is 90 feet away. So you cannot see the other guy. Okay. 
Well, or well, depending on what it's what you're doing. Uh, if it's a targeted attack, it's dim light, so you're at disadvantage. It's a save, so I, I'm going to assume the hallway is also a straight hallway. <laughs> okay. So I will cast a lightning bolt towards the red guy, and hopefully the blue guy is going to be somewhere behind it. What's the so that, uh, uh, the hmm? range of a of a lightning bolt? 120 feet. Uh, yeah, I think it's 120. But Elzer is going to have to make a save too. Right, I forgot to move yes. first. Uh, can and... I move on the other side of Elzer? You cannot because she takes up the entire space. Yeah. She was specifically trying to make the other one not be able to move through. Okay. On the other hand, it's not going to do much damage to her. I have 200 hit points. Okay. It's true. <laughs> <We're 37. laughs> Lightning bolt this fucker. All this right. fucker being the thing, not. Uh, range is 100 feet, not 120. That's Let's weird. Check again. Uh, it's still within range. However, we'll get advantage on the save because you're outside of its sight. Uh, actually, it doesn't matter because it gets advantage anyway. So, first the blue guy. Yeah, I'll cast it at level three. So it's a DC 19 still. Sure. Uh, what kind of save was it? Dexterity? Yep. Okay. Uh, yeah, the red guy's not as good at that. But he does have advantage. Yeah, so he gets a 20. Was that the red one or the blue one? That's the red one. Okay. And the blue one. It's fives. <laughs> All right. And that's so, lightning damage. It is lightning damage? Okay. Yep. Uh, back to that one again. As you see the lightning coursing over it, not doing what you expected it to do. Uh, it is still alive. Whoops, wrong button. Uh, you do see that it is ragged and torn. The red one is ragged and torn. Mm -hmm. But the lightning didn't seem to do as much to it. Almost as though it's uh, it's happy with the elements. Damn it. Do I hear any streams of pain coming from down the hall? Faint. But yes. A little bit of, of annoyance more than, more than anything else. So I'll move back more. Now did Elzera make her save? Oh shit. You got this, Elzera. Oh, uh, what save is it? Dex. Dex Dexterity. Mm -hmm. Dexterity. Mm. Sorry, I can't use my sheet because that's my stats. Because you're not your sheet. Because mm -hmm. I'm not my you're sheet. You're a fire being. Uh, not a d12, a d20. There we go. Yeah, Made it. I make it. DC was nice. Okay, so you take half damage. Okay, which was? So it'd be 13. 13. 27. Oh, well, no, half damage. Okay, yeah, 13. It was really weird, Mark. Your sound came through Pat's mic first. <laughs> uh, inter, inter room <laughs> lag. Okay. Oh. Minus 13. Cool. All right. Uh, Amrun. Hmm. Um. Well, not much I can do. I'm going to investigate the room to see if it left anything behind or if there's any clues. Okay, make a quick investigation check then. Nine. Nope. Uh, other than the, the rotting and crumbling barrels, that, that moldy sack of, of flour or something like that, 
uh, a uh, pile of uh, rope, which is long since uh, lost its stability. You don't really see much. Um, you kind of get the impression that maybe it had uh, been hiding in here or trying to make a nest or whatever the things these things do. Okay. Uh, now, uh, do we have Clark back? He was having some issues. I'm hoping he's uh, been I'm able to, to drop his view. Ah, there we go. So there is a little laggy. fire in front of you. <laughs> That's fair. Well, Zara is currently a wall of fire. Kind of making Sorry. it difficult to move around. Uh, is that the pink square? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, does the fire look familiar? Yeah, yeah you, mean, see, you saw her transform, so. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right, then. Here we go. One, two, three, four, four. I mean, you're five. still going to burn by passing through the fire. That's fine. Six, seven. I'm using a bonus action to dash. Okay. Uh, D10 of fire damage. Okay, go ahead. Take six fire. Six fire. Okay, and you attack it. Probably putting it out of its misery. Uh, yep. Here's hoping. I've been put my commands. <laughs> I have noticed some roll 20 lag, so we'll be fine here. It'll be a flurry of blows, you might say. <laughs> mm. uh, 18 hits. I don't think it'll be much. 18 will hit? Okay. Um... You can also type slash roll space 1d20 plus 9 splash uh, plus d20 d4 if you want to do it all in one roll. Oh, that's what I was wondering. Let's do this, though. Um, so 13 and 5 necrotic. As you bring the glaive down on this, how does it look in its dying throes? I imagine it's uh, bifurcated. As the strange uh, ghostly extension of your weapon passes through it for a moment, it seems like it did nothing at all. And then the creature kind of sloughs off its left half, falling down into a, into a pile right into the water that's down below it. It starts to hiss and burn a little bit at that. The other half looking still, still standing, the eye turning around, twisting, trying to figure out what just happened to it. The whole body twisting to try to reach out for itself collapses as well. And in an instant, there's nothing but a pile of goo in front of you. You still have a little bit of movement, I think. No, you used your bat, don't, uh, yeah, you used to dash to get there. See, so might still have some movement. And you have one attack, but the other is quite far away. Did we lose him again? Clark, are you there? Oh, looks like we did. Well, you can presume there's not much more you can do from that distance. Elzera. Hello. Um, so I'm going to move to there. Okay. Uh, moving around everybody, kind of taking a small pinhole form at the moment, I suppose. Yep. With satisfaction, you see the the melting body of the uh, of the red slod beneath you. Yep. Um, you zip forward. And I am going to dash so I can share space. Okay. 
and it's on fire. <laughs> well, does it do that on its turn or yours? Uh, it it does that on its so, turn, but I basically light it on fire. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. It's its turn anyway now. So, uh, it will attempt not to be on fire. Is there an, a thing for that, or just it just is on fire? It just is. Okay. Uh, it does not seem to be as bothered as you might expect by something on fire. Fair enough. It takes a d10, which is two. Okay. Uh, it will attempt to make three strikes because the body of this thing seems to be surrounding it. It's sort of chewing and gnawing at the burning flames around it. It will attempt anyway to do so. Cool. Fifteen. Uh, that's the AC? Yeah. Uh, hmm. It is kind of point blank, but you can control your shape, so it's it's not an advantage for it. Oh, actually, it's its turn. Sorry, it has to look somewhat better. Uh, first one is a twenty to hit. Yeah. Uh, no, Clark, because she moved around you. She didn't have to engulf you. At the time when you moved through her before, she'd already been trying to uh, not let anything through. Uh... I can fit into an inch of space. Yeah, yeah. When, you, when you want to. So you take uh, 13 points of uh, piercing damage, non-magical, yep. uh, from the bite. I don't know why I can't select my character right now. Are you on the right layer, maybe? Uh, there we go. Uh, it then takes a claw attack, swinging out madly. 19 to hit. Uh, hits. Uh, what type of damage is this? The first one was non-magical piercing. Cool. This is non-magical slashing. So that would be half of that, so six. Mm -hmm. and, then... Uh, and then uh, another five, so half of the ten is five. Yeah. Hmm. Are you immune to disease in that form? Uh, exhaustion, grapple, paralyzed, petrified, poison, prone, afraid, and unconscious. And make a DC fifteen or DC or make a Constitution save. Sorry, fifteen is obviously your target. Uh, constitution is plus three. Hmm. Are you actually humanoid though? I am not a humanoid. Yeah, you're not a humanoid. Don't worry about it. Cool. It can affect non-humanoids, apparently. Uh, and it will make one more strike before trying to get the hell out of here. Uh, which hits. That's a 23 to hit, which hits. For another 10 uh, slashing, reduced to 5. Cool. And please make 3d10. Roll for me, please. So, 2 and 3 more and 1 more. So, 6... From that. And it will attempt to move. Let's see if it can get away. Uh, it dashes around the corner. Cool. Can I make an attack of Almost opportunity? Up. You certainly can. Uh, six. 25. That is a hit. <laughs> One, two. Six plus three. So eight more magical fire. Is it bludgeoning and fire or is it just fire? Magical fire. Okay. It's the touch. Uh, again, can... Yep. It sort of tickles up its back but doesn't seem to do as much. Uh, that is its turn. Zakis, you can no longer see any of them. You can see the large fiery ball, which is your friend, presumably, at the other end of the hallway. And you're backing up into an unknown space. But other than that, you're fine. I'm just going to move as far as I can towards the action. Whoop, no, that, that's not what I want. How do I do the thing where I see distance? Uh, it's the uh, probably the third or one down. The one that looks like a circle with a square in it. Gotcha. 
almost like a power symbol. There you go. I'll move there, I guess. Okay. You have to move back to the pointer to move your character. Then I'll cast Mage Armor, <laughs> just in case. There you go. Uh, that is Zacchaeus' turn, Abrun. Um, they still seem to be fight, fighting or chasing after something way out there. Uh -huh. We've now seen the dark, the darkness re-engulf the hallway. Three, four, five, six. Um. Yeah, why not? I'll uh, dash past. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, I forgot dash was a thing. Oh, I forgot I can move thirty-five. Uh, where's my? Well, dash is an action still, so you couldn't be doing that. And uh, yes, yeah, uh, yeah. major armor. Actually, two more. I can get to there. Okay. Oh, wait, no, I got a bonus action, don't I? Um, uh, okay, but I can't see anyone other than Elzera there. Okay. That's right. Nothing. No problem. I'm done. Okay. Uh, Clark. Once again, there's a ball of fire. Oh, we have lost a Jody for a moment. Yeah. Well. I'll have to figure out if maybe, yeah, if he shuts down the video, maybe he can keep contact better. Yeah, that was my suggestion. Perhaps, uh, as we are nearing 8 o'clock, which is our normal uh, come-to-close time, uh, as it seems like this I think might be able to get away or at the very least it might be able to uh, elude you for a, a considerable period of time uh, perhaps we'll call it to a close for this evening okay. and you can proceed with the bug hunt next week I'm just going to put a note here that I intend to move after it <laughs> I will that, way. <laughs> that is fair um, and uh, we're all getting used to the new technology, as is everybody around the world doing all of this stuff. So uh, please bear with us as we continue to uh, make our way. Uh, as we're coming to the end of this episode, though, uh, how about uh, Marie? You can tell people a little bit more about how they can join in the conversation or even cheer us on or, I don't know, uh, ask us questions or whatever they want to do. So we have a Facebook page. It is Legend of the Drowned Isles. And a Facebook group that is Watchers of the Drowned Isles. Uh, legend. Helps if I can spell. And I'm just going to actually be nifty and drop the link into this text. Ooh. There you go. That is the link. It is there for the page. Go there. You can find us and post announcements when we're about to start streaming and yeah so it will be our, our intention to uh, come back again next week you can go to uh, youtube.com and look for uh, actually i think it's youtube.com slash encaf1 still uh, my uh, my youtube channel you can find it like and subscribe hit the bell uh, i don't know if we have jody back entirely but we will uh, be coming back next week um, as I still haven't figured out all the things here, uh, we'll go to our end screen. Everybody can be quiet for a moment and then we'll sign off. So have a great day, folks. Stay self, stay self, be clean. No, what am I saying? Stay healthy. Be, be, uh, be uh, healthy. Wash your hands and, uh, we will see you. Yeah, please. Uh, we only have a limited number of audiences it is. So please don't leave us. Uh, we shall see you again next week.